Um, CT? I'm here. Yay, thank you for being here. <laughs> Amazing. And um, Eric did tell me he's on his way. I think so that just leaves Brian. Don't think I heard from Brian. Is I'm, he here? I'm down oh. there. Hey, Brian. I can't hey. see that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we call to order at 7.09 and then we have roll call. Sam, Kat, Je Jesse, Alex, CT and Brian and Eric is on his way. No, thank you. Um, Sam, you sent the minutes, didn't you? I think so. Yeah, I think you did. Oh, I if remember. If I could take this over, I would. I would let you. <laughs> we'll do it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Anyone? Anyone it's like? Would... Or wants to take a shot at taking minutes one e one evening? Like those, they're super simple. They don't have yeah. to be in depth. Like we don't have to have exactly like what was spoken and just a gist of. A gist of what we've um, discussed and any things, um, action items that we've decided on to or voted on. And I'm happy to like occasionally do them. So, or like swap out with somebody and just say, oh, I'll do the minutes, you know. But I've found I'm just, I was like definitely not my strong suit. Well, thank you for doing that. And if nobody volunteers, like I'll still do them happily. I will probably try and just send them out again too this time. Sure. Because I'm not finding. Oh, no, there they are. Nope. Yeah. I'll probably just take a look for them and make sure we got them again. So we'll, we'll right. go ahead and prove that next time. Okay. So um, public comment. Anyone online? I can't see if there anyone is, but. Yeah, speak up if there's any, any public comment. Yeah, I'm Bettina Madison. I had a comment. Hi, Bettina. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, on the trails master plan, I believe this is on your radar, but I would just want to make sure all the trails are sanctioned trails. They're authorized trails in conjunction with working with agencies. Right. Did you have a specific concern? Um, many. Yeah, we have a lot of illegal unauthorized trail building around the area and with a lot of uh, frequent use and uh, it's ecologically damaging and illegal. And I would like uh, more education on that fact that it is illegal to build trails. You need to work with the agencies and have them sanctioned. And um, one that concerns me I recently discovered is behind the elementary school. And it's possible it was sanctioned. Maybe the school and the trail builders worked with the Forest Service. Um, but that is on many maps. It's actually on the sign at the bridge in Netherland, Kendall's Corners, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just wonder uh, how this, this happens if people think the National Forest is just wide open for any kind of activity, and it's not. So I just want to make sure that's on your radar for the uh, master plan. That's all. Thanks, Patina. Does anyone have any questions for for her on that? I think um, sanctioning trails and making sure that um, you know we have specific routes mapped out and very clear from a legal and ecological standpoint um, is a major part of our effort. So. Appreciate your commentary. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I was just trying to pull up the, um, the trails map that we have and that. Do you know if it's on the trails map? Is that 1 of them? Yes. Here? Yes, it connects to some uh, trails in the Indian peaks wilderness. That's federal land. Ah, right. It runs up to the. Um, yeah. The caribou ridge neighborhood. There are trails that go through there. Yeah. So if that's Bureau of Land Management, that's that's not something that we're going to be talking about within our trails master plan system. I see. Um, uh, I believe it's Forest Service, National Forest. 
yeah forest service yeah. unfortunately we just don't have jurisdiction to do to do anything on right outside. that's why i, I want to make sure that you don't include things where there is no yeah. jurisdiction I, I believe that the trails specifically you're referencing kendall's corner and the one that goes up to the caribou ridge area and that goes down towards town are all sanctioned trails i believe with the because permission they, of the forest service Yes, yes, there are trail markers of the Forest Service on those trails. Though they're not particularly well maintained. Oh, um, uh, may I have information on when that was sanctioned? Like what kind of official agreement that was with the Forest Service? But Tina, those trails were put in by the Forest Service when Kendall passed away, and that would have been in 1990. Oh. We could try and ask the elementary school if they have contracts on that. Um, or sanctioned on that, but um, the town of Netherland did not put those in. So I'm not sure that the town of Netherland would have any information on the Kendall, Kendall's Corner trails. Okay, so it would be a forest service issue. Correct. There, I, I know that those are very well trafficked by locals and also by kids from the elementary school, using them quite a bit. Yes, but they still need to be authorized trails. As they were in 1990 and they were installed by the forestry service by who the forestry service oh forest service okay and just to let you know the trails that are on some signs and maps are um, east of the peak to peak highway along ridge road and those are unsanctioned trails if you read the management plan for mud lake or caribou ranch there there weren't not supposed to be any trails east of the peak to peak and some of those are in forest service land and unsanctioned. So that's a forest service problem. That's a county open space problem, but I just want to make sure that it's not part of your master plan because that would be inappropriate. Well, I think the question depends on what you mean by part of our master plan. Part of the master planning work that we're doing is soliciting input from folks like yourself, but also other folks who have the exact opposite opinion on what those what should happen with those trails in the public um, engagement sessions we've had usually down at the uh, farmers market we've gotten a lot of comments from folks that are interested in um, kind of making some of these trails uh, more official from just being the social trails they are now and getting them properly sanctioned as opposed to closing them down so That's what we're right. doing what we're doing is just collecting a lot of information a lot of opinions and the trails master plan ultimately um, will mostly apply to trails that exist within the town of Le Nederland boundaries. But of course, we do have trails that connect to trails that are maintained by other agencies. Um, and so we'll, we're going to continue with the process of engaging with folks like yourself, but also engaging with the other agencies and other special interest groups. And we're, we'll kind of put a lot of those findings into the master plan document that we have. Um, the master plan itself isn't necessarily going to be a map of all trails that exist. It's going to be a, a strategy and a perspective on on really what everyone agrees we should be doing with town of Netherland maintained trails. Yeah, right. So everything has to be official and condoned by the agencies. Yeah, to that end, I think that any any trail that we do map or plan in master planning sh that connects to outside trails we should probably just double check on all the trails that it's connecting to that. Yeah, it, that some, some of those different. actually dump out onto private land. So you'd have to work with those landowners too. I mean, in that uh, Ridge Road area, a bit more control over like ones that are within the town limits, mm -hmm. such as Stinky Gulch, which is listed here as an existing and that is an existing. That's a social trail on private property, but we would have more ability to weigh in on that since it's within the town of Netherland boundaries. Yeah, if but if we build a trail on town of Netherland boundaries yeah. that directly continues and connects onto other lands that are unsanctioned trails, yeah. then I do think we're a bit at fault. Yeah. Like we shouldn't do that. That yeah. seems maybe not like a smart move. So we should end trails before they connect to unsanctioned social trails that are not on town of Netherland property. Um, or at least have them contact double back. With the yeah. Whoever owns or it. or make contact and form an agreement. But if there is no, yeah, that that's hard to do with Forest Service and with county and with BLM sometimes, and might be more prudent for Netherland to just hold off. Yeah. On connect connecting trails until we have those agreements. Yeah. Mm.
Um, do you have any further comments, Bettina? That's really, really interesting comments. And thank you for coming and giving us feedback. We really appreciate that. I think um, an educational effort about the existence of rules for trail building anywhere, public or private land, um, would be a great thing. If it could come from, from this committee, that would be wonderful um, because it's overlooked so often. And um, real resource damage occurs. So people need education about the regulations. It's fairly simple. You need permission before you can go ahead and build or just ride. And um, I would like to see improvement of the condition of the land. Bettina, is there, um, this is Sam Ovet. Is there any, uh, any particular area where you've noticed this that we can maybe use as a educational uh, campaign or like point it out or, you know, take some pictures and share if we were to go down that route? Well, I think the uh, trails east of the peak to peak connecting to Mud Lake are a good example. They go on um, Caribou Ranch Land, Indian Peaks Holdings, LLC, um, without, I'm sure, without any permission. Then they continue on to county open space. Uh, behind the sort yard and then continue on to national forest with blue paint on trees, which is really offensive to me and uh, back on to Indian peak holdings. So but, that's an area with a lot of use. Put the mark on the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Bettina, and uh, if, Bettina, the forest service puts the mark on the trees for those blue ones. Just Nikki just made us aware she's. Yeah, I knew that too. So it's just not private folks doing that, which is probably just important to recognize. Oh, the, the Forest Service sanctioned that trail and put blue paint. Well, I don't know, they, they're the ones who put the blue paint on those on the trees. Oh, I don't think so. I observed bikers putting paint on trees. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure where that information comes from, but it's dumping out onto private land. And, uh, you know, those are fairly absentee landowners who probably don't know about it or uh, maybe don't care, but if we're going to like include those kinds of trails on any kind of map or sign, um, then it needs to be sanctioned. And that whole area would be a good place for education. Talking to the Forest Service and go, go ahead and try and see what we can do to go ahead and get those officially sanctioned. That would be pretty cool because I think one of our goals is to try and make this whole area as, as walkable as possible and get people out of their vehicles. Um, but yeah, but it looks, sounds like we need Agreed. to connect yeah. with the uh, yeah USFS and go and ahead. the private landholders Indian Peaks Holdings which is the private part of Caribou Ranch right there's a yeah. lot of private land there I'm not sure we would have the capability to, to kind of go that far out of town to talk about um, but yeah definitely some of these connecting trails around the elementary school I think that would be worth Macy I think the audio may have the audio thing That's all I have. It's a simple point. Let's be legal. Yeah, thank you, mate. Thank you, Bettina. Yeah. Thank you. So we will definitely circle back to um, trails, trails discussion, and I like really look forward to hearing some of your feedback that we've been getting for the last couple of months here um, on the trails master plan. But otherwise, we will start with our first discussion item, which is new board member introductions. So we have two new members and one continuing member this month. Um, we would like to introduce, if you'd like to introduce yourselves a little bit for any of us who were not at the um, meeting where you were elected, the BOT. Welcome, Kat. Sure. <laughs> I need to push something here. Oh, yeah. yeah, if you push it and it's screen, then you're. Good and it stays on yeah. until I turn it off. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, hi, everyone. I'm Kat Barr. Um, I am a Netherlands resident, have lived here since 2011, and I'm one of the new ProSAB members as of today. I don't 
do you want more info or <laughs> yeah you gotta keep some more because we know more about you that you're very awesome and you've done stuff with <laughs> parks department totally awesome. and you have worked <laughs> with planting and doing gardening and not just weed stuff and sure. yeah 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 so you're involved um, with wild bear yeah i got involved with the town parks last summer when i uh, got to work with nikki and macy as well and um others Hoping to um, take care of the parks and start the Barker um, project and lots of other things. And um, yeah, I, I have a background in um, nonprofit operations and management um, for a variety of different organizations, primarily virtually up until about a year and a half ago. So I worked for national nonprofits, but from here, which was fabulous. Um, but I now, um, last summer I worked um, for the food pantry and also for the town. And then now I'm working at Wild Bear Nature Center as the development director. Um, so doing a lot of grant writing and other fundraising uh, um, and also fun feature activities. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm super excited to get involved and very excited to see a noxious weed pool on here. So just wait till we get there. <laughs> One of my questions is going to be like, what do, what kind of things do you think you're going to bring to the parks or like what specific interests? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I need to like, I, uh, based on like all of the stuff that I know that is currently going on, I'm, I'm definitely excited to can to what I don't know exactly how to do this, but to help any way I can with the Barker trails project would be cool to like continue. Cause Yay. you know, we worked on that last summer. Um, I. Definitely would like to have any involvement with pulling noxious weeds because the scentless chamomile is driving me crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I pulled it all out of my property last week. Um, is, is that that yellow mustard looking stuff? No, it's the white daisy looking stuff with like, there's two different ones. There's oxy daisy and scentless chamomile, mm -hmm. but the scentless chamomile is everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. There's others. There's yellow ones too. Um, I'm not an expert, but I yeah. forget what is the that. Do you think that's the main one? That... Silas Camille, I would say in town is definitely yeah. the main one. Out of town, like there's like some yellow We've got thing. Some oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thistle. Definitely thistles. Thistles. Yeah, everywhere. A lot of them are really easy to pull out. Yeah, really. Like thistle yeah, is yeah, actually yeah, really. the, huh. the yellow one is yellow sweet clover, and I don't think it's classified noxious in Colorado, but it is invasive. Oh, the, mm. is that the tall one with all the, the like the yellow, yellow. down yeah. pink flowers? Yeah. yeah. Um. So that, and then yeah, I think like anything to do with um. Yeah, I think anything to do with like activity to help like maintain or like, um, um, uh, do things <laughs> with the parks, right? So I think I maybe am like I'm definitely happy to be involved, but less more like the big master plan stuff, and maybe more of like the activities I'm with fine. like volunteers and doing things with dirt. Awesome. So like making things beautiful, <laughs> if possible, that would be nice. Yes. So, yay! Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, we definitely will. We'll need that. Cool. All right. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Have your energy here. <laughs> All right, and then the next member um, who was elected by the BOT were, um, is Alex. You want to introduce yourself? Yay. I think it's working. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, Alex Zabrick, um, to the two on the uh, line. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, hopefully. Um, I moved to NED about a year ago. Um, we live in Big Springs, and I think I initially got sparked by the Big Springs egress by just getting more involved in the community and also just volunteering um, at the food pantry gardens for the past several months. So just looking for ways to get more plugged in. Um, I'm a, in my day job. I'm an attorney. I work for Vail Resort. So I do interface with like the Forest Service and things like that and just outdoor recreation folks in general. And I'm like one of those like cats saying she wants to get in the dirt and I'm like a document review, like, let's go and draft some stuff and edit some stuff kind of crazy person. Um, so I think that's a strength I bring to the table. Um, just that kind of like legal eye. Um, outside of that, I think I'm, I think Ned has a really cool history and I'd love to see that kind of like weaved into our outdoor space. Cause I think like those are kind of two key features of Ned and kind of having interactive features on walks about our history and weaving those together. Um, would be a really great opportunity drawing people to places like Gillespie or in a walkable manner. Um, so yeah, looking forward to working with everyone. Welcome. 
Yay. Yeah, pretty cool. A legal document reviewer and a hands-on parks legal. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good there. <laughs> Any questions for Alex or Kat? Technological. Guys online, if you had any questions, we our audio went out for a second. I don't know if either of you did. No, you're good. Nope. Okay, awesome. And we can hear you again. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cool. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that the meeting can be fairly short and sweet because it is summertime and we are, this is the Parks and Rec pod, and I'm sure we're all out <laughs> recreating in the parks this summer. So, we'll try and like whiz through what we can do. Um, but next on the agenda, we have the Trails Master Plan. So, we have um, some of our public charrettes, which is just a fancy term for feedback and leading kind of community. We like to use the word charrettes instead. <laughs> and it's just, it's just a, a way of um, getting feedback from people and soliciting input from residents and outside people and community members and all sorts of people. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I know a bunch of us have done some of these outreach events, mostly the public table program kind of at the farmer's market lately. Um, I know CT has done a bunch. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit of feedback and then maybe some plans on how we're kind of going to co collect all this feedback and what we're going to do once we've gathered enough. Um, and then lastly, I know Miranda wanted us to see if we wanted to continue with our charrette timeline um, because we haven't had enough volunteers to staff the last couple of scheduled tables, which I didn't know, I didn't know about. Um, and then just see where they were kind of on track with the timeline and and some feedback. Um, maybe start with you, CT, since I know you've been to so many of these. Like, How's it been going? Uh, first off, happy to jump back in now that I've got a uh, oh, baby <laughs> tentatively. We're more on better footing now. Um, but yeah, yeah. Happy to hop back in. Um, from my experience, uh, my interactions with the public have been overwhelmingly positive. Um, everyone loves the trails in Netherlands. Uh, people use them every day for commuting, um, for just going to the store um, and for recreation and there were some very regular repetitions like improving signage uh, for stinky gulch um, and establishing a trail from the high school into town mm -hmm. uh, was a which i heard that at least three times every time i was there um getting the bridge that's currently in the area that we are working with eldora to restore as wetlands replaced as soon as possible um, it's been a safety thing. I've had a few parents come and talk to me about, um, but overall people were very, very willing to engage, to put into their 2 cents. They were excited that there's a master plan coming together and many people were willing to volunteer, uh, their time and their efforts, uh, to help improve the walkability of town. Um, so I, I thought it's, it's just been overwhelmingly positive. That's my takeaway. With a lot of great specific suggestions, okay. uh, the other one I heard a lot was improving um, the the trails that go along the creek up towards the old Wolf Tongue mining facility, and that's kind of a mismatch of private and public lands. So, but but a, a beautiful area, a beautiful <laughs> area, and a lot of historic value. So, hey CT, do you mind? Um, what bridge was that that you mentioned? What? It's over the North Fork of Boulder Creek. Um, <laughs> if you're walking really close to the main creek. Yeah. Just before you hit the dam. Yep. Dam. That, that, that bridge has a large hole in it and it's got a washout on one side and someone put their foot in there the other week. It, it's like, it's not great. It's not great. Okay. At a bare minimum, I'd be happy to go down there and drill a few boards across it, but like that's that, that's half measures at best. You can't, can't be touching no city of Boulder property. Oh, yeah, that is city of Boulder, the weir. That that bridge is city of Boulder. Yeah. Or Wait, are we talking about the same? Are you bridge? talking about the bridge that goes from Fisherman's Lot to the Teen Center parking lot? Oh, that. One. Uh, 
it's oh, it's oh, right okay. next to Fisherman's Lot. It goes kind of from Fisherman's Lot to the area next to the dam. I know which one you're talking about, yeah. Thank you for drawing that to my attention, CT. I'll put it on our list to repair. Okay. If you need a hand, let me know. Happy to help. Although I'm fast running out of paternity leave. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about that little, there's like a little yeah, bridge, like wooden bridge, yeah, right? near yeah. the memorial bench, and that's yeah. us. Yeah, and that is us. And then there's the other little wooden bridge that, yeah, fisherman, connects fishermen's lot to the teen center. I mean, I, ideally, we do make that kind of part of the package with the wetlands restoration, but it's not going to wait, and, and it could be a liability for the town, so that, that's one specific one. But feedback like that was very forthcoming. Yeah, I was like, we thought well, first when you were saying that bridge, because the one the comments that I've had a lot too was <laughs> is the weir that is that does cross the bridge, the narrow, the super narrow bridge that's like to, joins Chipeda side to the Teen Teen Zinc side, and that is so narrow that you can't push a bike across it. So you see people lifting their bikes up and carrying their bikes across. <laughs> Oh, and the other one that people were very adamant about was um, a better crossing uh, from the neighborhoods on the hill uh, to the community center. There's not even a crosswalk there, and you kind of just drop off a cliff that <laughs> you kind of scuttle down to the community center from a certain angle. Yep. Um, and there's like a couple of old pallets. Uh, there's a trail that kind of goes around and, and connects with the road that's currently the bridge is like a few pallets. And it's like, you know, if we had a handful of two by fours, we could do a little better than that. But uh, that that was another common refrain was the crossing to the community center. Like just think, thinking out loud, like hypothetically, would the easiest way do you think would be just to C dot to get C dot to put in the crosswalk? Uh, yeah. So I'm in communication with C dot right now about that area anyway yeah. because they're having some drainage, yeah. serious drainage problems. Yeah, um, and I've asked them in the past and recently to, while they're working their drainage out, can they please put a culvert in there? Yeah. And so at least we would be able to eliminate the um, pallet situation. Um, but on that note, then they don't feel that it's safe to have a crosswalk there. We're still, we're still going back and forth with that because they're coming through next year to do some overlays and we're 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 talking yeah i doubt i'm going to get anything done with cdot's timeline 10 years <laughs> right um so we'll we'll just uh, i'm going to keep pushing you guys guys right yeah now. or like is there anything that public could do to encourage that because that is the main crossing from yeah the that's school good to the town of course so, yeah like, Any, that is like this children good point. running across the road is shaky we have yeah. miles an hour all basically. the time at All least some signage, you know, children crossing, beware, slow down, that, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Why doesn't CDOT think it's safe? Because the because of the visu visual. Yeah. yeah. What, what, I mean, but what's what, really why it's not safe, safe to cross is, there. Yeah. Where exactly <laughs> is the point we're talking about? Right here. Right behind the community. Behind center. here. Yeah, to Navajo yeah. Trail. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And if you cross there from the community center parking lot, which is what most people do, go straight uh -huh. across uh -huh. there. There's a we've done that before. I've done that with yeah. And there's a stack child. of pallets. It's pretty and... exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is very exciting. It, um, the alternative <laughs> though would be to move that crosswalk just up a little bit further toward Pomo. Right, and Pomo then way, people yeah. would have to come down, down a little bit yeah. and up to Navajo. I think change is hard, but it's doable. Yeah. So we'll sure. See. We'll see what happens. Just, just something a little safer than, you know, yeah. a hope and a prayer as you scuttle across the highway. I mean, if if the speed limit is lower, it is not that close to the curve. I it's not that blind. Right. And I have asked for the C dot for the I've asked C dot to lower the uh -huh. speed limit um all the way up to Ridge Road. Right. Yeah. No, that's, um, that makes that makes, that makes that a good idea. Sense, especially it's that's been coming the other way we do that. Why don't Yeah. Um, I asked them to lower the speed limit specifically because of the turn onto Ridge and this turn mm -hmm. to the school mm -hmm. right there. You got people that are trying to pass yep. and come out, people that are trying to continue on at 45 yep. Yep. Eat, with people turning both yep. ways. Um, it's it, it's taking really that turn a too hard with a thing to have truck that full of trash. Not good. Mm -hmm.
And especially <laughs> as people are coming up this hill, they know the speed limit's about to change to 45. Right. Yeah. And so they're already gunning. They're already gunning it, it. yeah. Yeah, like, so I've uh, asked them, and the PD has asked them as well, can we please talk about lowering the speed limit yeah. all the way through town? Well, we did get them to agree to move the 35 sign past the library. Yeah. So start. we just got to yeah. keep, just gotta keep, keep pushing it. edging it. Pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got off signage. Um... Yeah. But they'll, they got <laughs> mad just when the church put out a sign. Like, they made them rip it down. I know. So we're we're trying to do it right. PD and myself, um, Public Works, we all want that changed, especially with Industrial Row being up there on Ridge Road and yeah. um, the school being on Indian Peaks. It doesn't make sense to have a speed limit increase yeah. where it does. Yeah. So. Agreed. Good. Yeah. So this, I think, all like this is the kind of feedback that's going to be really useful because then we'll be able to prioritize mm -hmm. this within the trails master plan. We'll be like, this is this is this is the feedback that we're getting seeing a lot. So on that same note, I had a meeting with Dr. Cog, which is the Denver Regional Council of Governments. Um, I had applied for a grant to try and take all of the information that all of you fine people have gathered at the farmers markets and beyond um, on our trails and trying to put it into an appendix for our prost master plan. Mm -hmm. I was close, so close that they have um, decided to try and work with me to come up with alternatives to the grant. And one of the things that they tossed at me was to give me a, a student uh, student group even um, that would be working on a thesis or a hypothesis or a These final are like uh, college students, like college like students, yeah, the graduate students with Dr. Cog already, uh -huh. and um, so that was one idea. They have offered to help us get do more public outreach as well as take what we've already gotten and put it into graphs, charts, maps, whatever it is that we're going to need it to look like, as well as to write it all out for me, because that's a lot of typing. I did get a new chair, but um, <laughs> um, don't know if I really want to sit in it for that long. So um, Dr. Krog is still working with me. They were sending me an email uh, Wednesday, or third, that's today. Today, um, I didn't work today, excuse me. Um, so they were supposed to send me an email today with some other options um, that would help us put the, together these pieces of information that we've all been gathering um, and to try and figure out if we needed to do more public outreach and it, just to see how it would all look in the end. They asked me what my desire would be for the completion of this project and for me, the, my in my wildest dreams would have this project in my hands in a concrete form by May of next year, hmm. because that I use the trails master plan heavily mm -hmm. on a daily. It is almost a Bible to my, to me and my staff. Um, and we don't try to build trails that aren't on town of Netherland land. We don't try to do things that the town of Netherland hasn't asked us already shown us in our trails master plan to do. So um, in a real perfect world, I would have all of this information in my hands so I can run with it starting May of next year. And Dr. Cog seems to be fairly confident that they can make that happen for me. So although I didn't get the grant, I was fairly disappointed. Um, they said you were, you were so close and we really love this project. We'll go again. And yep, and they, this was their first year offering this grant. So um, what was they, it called? I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Was this the one? Because one of the trustees at a couple of meetings ago mentioned that it was possibly we were going to get the high school to Old Town one. No, oh, we are supposed to already get that. Get that's yeah, already that's, been approved. That's already. That's a Boulder County project. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to. Yeah. Are that's they going to? I guess that's the question. <laughs> yeah. Are they going to? You trust Boulder <laughs> County to do a damn thing? I, I do don't need to do think they're going to. Gonna. Gonna I had a meeting with them I mean, recently. you know, they. they that transportation sales tax program just it drives me nuts. I, I, me nuts. I doubt would they, if they're not going to do anything, would they be willing to just let us definitely get volunteers not? They together are so protective of the way they do things. Uh, they, uh, no, we'd have okay. 100 patinas in here if we were putting in another, another trail that wasn't sanctioned and approved by all of our different 
people. No, we need to pressure them to, to get that, it done. You said the trail high school to town. Yeah. 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 So told to I mean, that seems like totally worth pressuring yeah. as yeah. much as we can. Yeah. Like they want it. Desperately. Yeah, they want it. Yeah. I've Nikki, if I can be helpful, help like this is what we want. What was that? Go ahead. Nikki, if I can be helpful with the data entry aspect of it, or liaisoning with Dr. Cox's uh, students or anything, I'm happy to contribute. Awesome. We they were talking. Uh, so this this was all just talk. Still, we're still trying to come up with a concrete plan. But the talk was to get me the students by January so that they could complete their project by March and have it to me by May. So that's kind of where Dr. Cog was talking the other day, the direction. Um, mm -hmm. And as far as, yeah, the, the we had a large meeting with uh, City of Boulder and Boulder County and uh, a a bunch of other entities recently, and um, they gave me some contact information to try and get that one that county road 130 trail sidewalk completed. Um, even if we don't get other money, but there's just really it's really going to be a difficult push all of it. So. But a worthwhile one. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, I walked that high school road when I was a teenager and it was dangerous then. And with the tenfold increase of traffic, I, I'm, I'm scared for the kids that walk that highway today. Yeah. There's a tiny bit of Arapaho ranch land, but I think we could get Kayla to agree to it. Yeah, I think she would. She's downstairs. We should go ask her. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think she, she, no, I'm sure she'd be interested in you know, talking about improving accessibility to that area. Yeah. Is there like a where it would go plan already? And it's more just Boulder County needs to, it's on Boulder County land or mm -hmm. is that okay? Mm -hmm. It's a, basically from the high school all along the highway. And okay. then once you cross the highway there, you go Oopsies. right it's into like Old Town and then Old Town has actual trails that go through it. Thank you. Is there is there anything we need to do then to keep that moving forward? I would love for you guys to continue with your outreach program. Yeah. Every map that you've used at every farmer's market is ready and ro still rolled up with all the sticky notes in place, waiting for someone to come along and compile it all. Um, if you, I just don't think that three or four farmer's markets is going to do it. I think we really, like, yeah. you know, after do a like while, you're reaching out to the same people. The same people go to every farmer's markets and every farmer's market. I think we have a great opportunity at the Harvest Fest, which will be double the size of a regular farmer's market. Yeah. Um, we have different weekends that are just incredibly busy at Chapita Park. We could reach out to Wild Bear. I think we have an inn yeah. there that could help us gather some information from the patrons that were coming into the Wild Bear. Yeah. We could reach out to the library. I think we have yep. an inn there. And I think the library could really be a good source of information for us. Um, I think there are a ton of smaller events. And, well, if, if nothing, I mean, there's birthday parties and my daughter's baby shower and things like that that are going on in Chapita that... You know, each one of those people is a local person that would have yeah. valuable information. So, if nothing, I could possibly help with the reach out, with the the outreach as well. But I hear it on a pretty regular. Um, anyway, so there are different events that the town will put on. Then, you know, coming winter time, we've got the whole the hockey thing. The rink is crazy busy. Um, we could have people up there outreaching to the people okay. at the rink and touching base with a whole different dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, um, there are a lot of opportunities between now and next March, say, yeah. Um, potentially we wouldn't need the students to do any outreach for us. They could just come and compile. So here's, here's a, here's a proposal. We've got, we got seven members on this board. How about we all pick one of those interest groups and reach out to them? And then come back. So we've got what I have is seniors, the seniors group, the elementary school, Wild Bear, 
library, Teen Zinc, and Rink slash Tennis. Um, so that's six or seven if you split up Rink and Tennis. Do you think you, think you should could split it? Split it. All right. So there you go. If we split it, we've got we've got seven, and then we could all take one of those groups. I'll take Teen Zinc because I've head met the director over there. Yeah. yeah so. What's the ask exactly? Like to is there like a written survey somewhere or we do have a written survey. Brian, do you feel comfortable with the survey questions or should we do it like how we've been doing it at the farmers market? Take a take a map to these to these folks and, and Yeah, I think the I think the map is yielding better results. Um a bit more in person. Yeah. Yeah. More like be at one of these groups events or yeah like so what we've been doing is like just take taking that map and like, basically and being like which trails do you use and just getting their feedback and having them stick notes on it and having it a bit more informal interactive. and interactive yeah yeah, yeah I, I i'm happy to talk to my coworkers. i was thinking in all right forest Top. might be kind of great um oh great yeah right? like i mean yeah I would have yeah. To ask, yeah so <laughs> think you, that's it. the thing you think further than summer so right things like that different. are you taking wild bear yeah, I yeah. can talk okay. to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to Mike. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thanks, uh, you have seniors at my school, teens, and rink tennis, wild bear. I should probably do the library. <laughs> okay. In the library. Thank you, Jesse. I got teens. I don't... All right, CT. I don't really have an in with one of those groups, but I'm happy to continue um, volunteering at the uh, farmer's markets. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, CT. There's yes, a big. nice, real big, double the size of a regular farmer's market coming up on October 2nd. Yeah. That's the Harvest Fest. And I think that'll be one that it'll be really important to be at. It, it'll be at least double the crowd, if not more. Well, I have some ins with the elementary school right now, too. So I could definitely reach out to the. Ask Esme. That's, that's my kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she already thinks she's designed the. And park. I do think it's important <laughs> to get the wee ones input. Who's uh, got a line on the seniors? I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? That so you don't have to do all of that. You've already got two. So I'm meeting with the seniors on Monday. Um, are they are going to be donating some some ADA exercise equipment for a chippy department okay. that I have been dreaming cool. of for four cool. years. So you're, are you good to take seniors? I'll take seniors. Okay. Oh, and then who wants rink and tennis? I'm happy to take it. Sweet. It's, it's, it's tricky. I'm I mean, just writing it down and that way we can. Yeah. I'm like, thinking of it mm. like an event or something. Yeah. Is there like, like a, a meeting? Critical... Like, do they have board, the board meeting? So rink, um, rink will be incredibly busy on Friday night disco. Yeah. So they do disco on Friday nights. Um, and that ring, starts a bit late, like December. Yeah, that, that's, that won't open until January. January. So rink is one that you don't even have to think about until January. Tennis and pickleball, you they play pickleball here like five days a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tennis, there are maybe 10 people that play tennis anymore. Um, and so it, I can get you the contact for Darren Davenport. He's the tennis. I have his contact. You I'm one of those ten people. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so are you are you good at tag rink and tennis? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. awesome. Right. awesome. Okay. Um, if you, you change your mind, just let us know. I want your input too. Um, so much better if you paid um, off. Yeah, just give your input and then. Yeah, you that's right. <laughs> and then and then go to tennis after. I have a so, lot of feedback from farmers market. One scout. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, you were there. Like, I got some massive people coming, but I don't know if it's appropriate. Well, it's all of it's appropriate. Yeah. We have no, as they, as they there's nobody's out. opinion I don't it's want. Evil at the entrance. I think that's mm -hmm. I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. That's going to reach a dynamic that farmer's market probably won't. Mm -hmm. Totally yeah, different I demographic. Yeah. yeah. Going to need walkability too. Yeah, so. yep. okay. yeah, that makes sense. Um, yep. Contact there is Nicole Cavallino. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So you, I, I guess for these events, we can just contact you guys at the town, like, May see you, Miranda, at town hall, and pick up one of those big maps to take. To I have them at my office. Um, the ones that we have already printed cool. mm -hmm. that are left. So I think I have four of them left in my office. Um, awesome. Yeah, mine got rained on pretty. Which, much. <laughs> if if CT What's is that? willing to continue on with the farmers markets, I I'll just have Peter print out some more of those maps because I'll keep the ones that I have for the farmers market. Been helping with setup for that so 
Yeah, the visual is very, very productive. It gets people yeah. talking about things yeah. so much more than just generally about trails. Yeah, exactly. You could be like, are you talking? Because when they start, when they start talking generally about trails, it seems to mostly just be complaints. And when they see the map, they're like, what if we did this? Or, and then this it's over just here. And yeah. It helps for understanding. Like a lot of the feedback I had from the farmer's market thing was like, we need, we need a trail around the reservoir. And it was like, well, this is why that's yeah. not happening. Yeah. You can explain it to them yeah. why. That's Indeed. The Love the reading the sticky notes too. After yeah. the farmer's market, so when the maps come back to me, I am, I'm loving it. There's some great comments. There's some, you know, little kid scratches <laughs> or little kids have tried mm -hmm. to write words mm -hmm. and things and, and, but it all makes sense and i'm mm -hmm. uh, i'm seeing a lot already in just the few maps that i've already got I've, i'm seeing a lot of common threads yeah there's a lot of places where yeah like cts and brian said it's a uh, or um it, it's there's a lot of things that everybody mm -hmm. is talking about yeah so it's, it's one interest. thing i was gonna mention eric and i did a, a little bit of a list of special interest groups and other folks to talk to. Um, and I don't think we've done any of the homework we assigned for ourselves yet. But in addition to the public outreach, um, we can still approach some of these organizations. I've just posted the doc link in the chat. Um, what do you think, Eric? Should we actually follow through on the stuff we said we'd do? You know, we probably should. <laughs> now that you put it that way, Brian. <laughs> um, Cool, but I do think that like going in there in a similar way with a map yep. is going to be valuable. So, I think so too. Um, Nikki, just maybe keep printing those things out and we can figure out how to kind of grab them from you. And for, I'll put up the request to Peter and ask how much paper do we have? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we bought it from the business connection. I imagine we have a little bit anyway. Yeah, cool. Yep. All right. And I just sent a message to the folks at uh, Teens Inc. to schedule something with them. There's the Ned Ned. Foot race coming up too. That's another big one. Um, those people are going to be on our trails a lot, and of course West Magnolia in that area. But that Ned Ned foot race, if anybody's going to be participating in it, um, and or if not, Stephen Lefavor is doing the Ned Ned foot race this year, Sam. So if you wanted to try and incorporate oh, yeah. that into yeah. your teens, the teens think event, so. Okay. Yeah. Let me just put that in there. I'll just like take, I'll discuss with it. That's September 10th. All right, cool. Your memory is amazing. Just rattling off these days. <laughs> September 11th is the Buff Classic bike race. But those people will be more, not really so much from here, just kind of coming through. Yeah. Um, we have the Ned Jazz and Wine Fest, oh. August 20th. Um, that'll be in Chapita Park. Ned Jazz and Wine. Yeah, I, can, cool. I bought tickets. Fancy. I never go to Netherlands stuff ever. Huh? And this is the first thing I've that sounds I've great. <laughs> so I love jazz music. Cool. That's super cool. You said so, the 20th? The 20th of August. Um, and then we there's a uh, a kids event in Chipito. Oh, there, there, there's just there's a lot. There's if we a, need more there's things a this weekend too. Like yeah, the there's a church potluck, then week. there's a there's a a kids like a kids day. Oh, national night out. That's a big yeah. one. National night out is August 2nd. That's the fire department, the forest service, Ned PD and public works. Mm -hmm. I will be there with the loader and a loader bucket full of crusher finds. And I'm going to hide prizes in the crusher, crusher <laughs> finds. I love it. And so the kids get to dig through until they find a baggie. Each baggie will have like a pencil or a Netherlands trails marker or a piece of Congratulations, charity. you get to put the marker up. That's right. Here you go, child. Tell me what you <laughs> wanted. <laughs> um, so um, fire department is gonna have their fire department, uh, the, the backpack water sprayers that they have, and they're gonna let the kids put them on and do like a, put a beach ball in the middle Good and stuff. just super, super fun. Blast each other. Yeah. So I told them they all have to come to me, get dirty, and then go to the yeah, fire department. So, so that is August, August 2nd. It's a Tuesday from 5.30 to 8. Okay. Yeah, do you think we, we could get put a table up? Of course. Sweet. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I know the person who's in charge of the event, so <laughs> um, she'll say yes. 
Um, yeah, absolutely. In fact, you could probably cool. come and hang out closer to public works. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I should be able to do that one. Yeah, I should be able to. We should all come to that be one. Able to do. It's, it's a really fun meet and greet good. opportunity yeah. for the public to come and meet all of your first responders. I encourage everyone to come. When I did the farmer's market table, I had, I had cake. So that helped. <laughs> Ooh, that's great. I got a lot of people to stop because I was giving out free cake that left. I noticed the candy is is doing all right. Yeah, yeah. doing all right with the candy. It's Candy's going. Always good. Yeah, and it's going. Like that and I helps. could probably help either with the harvest fest or the national night out, just depending on when we where we need people. I'm not sure when the harvest fest is. October second. Is it October second? Wow, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Just memory like a trap. So the, just to recap, the goal is to have outreach with all these various groups no later than March, at least one sort of kind of contact, if not more than one. Yeah, I would say as soon as possible, the beginning of 2023. Okay. And then by our next ProSAP meeting, I should have more answers from Dr. Cog as to what they think could work for us. They were going to give me different grant opportunities that might work for this same project yeah. as well. So they're gonna give me different grant opportunities. They're gonna connect me with the students. Um, and just, I'm, I'm very grateful to have been introduced to this, to the Dr. Cog. It's, um, it's gonna have a lot of, a lot of resources for me, so. Yes. Here's my other question, and, and especially for UCT, like, would it be helpful for us to have a Google Docs thing that we can just type up some of the feedback that we got within a period of time? I would say, yeah, like a spreadsheet. Would be yes, probably... kind of spreadsheet that we could just all do, like brain dump into it from the feedback that we're getting, and then we can revisit it later. And yeah, like a few categories of commentary, new trail. Uh, repair to something like that, that would make it very easy to sort out the data and even, uh, when applying for future grants. Demonstrate it to a way that would, uh, yeah, and that way I noticed like it was it fresh in my head for the first couple of days. I was like, I didn't write it down right away. And then I have, I have your map if you yeah. need it back. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've been taking pictures of the map at the end of my shift every time too, just in case, but that would be a good rudimentary way to, uh. Get that information into a digital was, format, so it's not plan. like and then, sitting in the back of a car or something. <laughs> and I was on my own with a tent, like holding the legs down, but like, don't fly. <laughs> you did it when I was gone. Didn't yeah. You? Oh. You're, <laughs> the hell, you're Brian. Brian, he was amazing. Like he did rush over, like, a, <laughs> I was he, like everything was getting soaked, and I was just holding the tent down. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have Brian. He's a really good. Employee. What do you think the categories should be? Yeah. Just write them down. Yeah, categories. So new trails, um, uh, repairs, yeah, repairs and maintenance. Hey, I can help with this because we already have a lot of those categories from the online survey that came through. Okay. Cool. Great. So I'll, I'll take that action to create a spreadsheet. Sweet. Thanks, Brad. Circulate. Are there still, Thanks, are there still rules about whether or not we're supposed to be using Google docs or. So long as I think we're not making any decisions on them or like, if it's just a brain dump. I think, uh, you mm, think you're, you're not or, even just allowed to no it all into one? not more than one not more than two people oh, on yeah, the same it. document yeah. mm. i don't have a problem with the public viewing this document just yeah. make it part of the time it records. needs to be publicly noticed every time you post yeah. anything mm. 24 hours in advance of you posting it you can't you can't We're posting it. it by meaning updating it right yeah updating the document it would be considered you having discussion with other trust with other Could members of the board to be downloaded and then like uploaded. Yeah, everyone can know, like, do it. Have the spreadsheet. Different. They do it separately and then just bring it back to a meeting in, and then it gets up. Yeah, you can bring it back to a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's yeah. technically arbitrary. It's not. Yes, it's absurd, but it is real. And yeah, no, that's there cool. are people who will who will ping us on it. Yeah, and they should. I well, mean, you know. sure. All right. So, <laughs> Brian, can you make the first one? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll make a spreadsheet that is a template and people can make a copy of that template to create their own notes and sh and you can store it wherever the heck you want to. And then when we get back together, we can do it the like fully upload the official way. Yep. That's a good work around. Thank you, Brian. Um, and then one other thing I was going to note about this, uh, but it's a thought has oh I've, the only other thing is um in terms of public forums that i thought of that might be useful is to set up a table at 
uh, Nederland High School for the Pessy Trailhead Shuttle on the weekends. Um, it's again, it requires a lot of human power to make that happen, but there's definitely an interested audience of people who care about trails there. They might not necessarily be from anywhere near Nederland, but we could gather some more feedback there as well. Yeah, I noticed when I was at, when I did the farmers market thing, some uh, the out of town people would come and be like, "Where where can I go hiking?" <laughs> we did a lot of that. Yeah, like, right. Hmm. Where are the good? Trees? I heard I heard a lot of requests for like, could you cut down some of the trees that have fallen across the Hesse Trail <laughs> on like the west side of the divide? It's like, you know, if next time I'm out there with my chainsaw, I'm happy to do it, but uh, mm -hmm. that's a little outside our purview. I feel like Hesse is a lot of people who don't live here. So I don't yeah. know if that's yeah. worth the squeeze. That. Yeah. yeah. And they're okay. all going to Hesse. Yeah. Right. They don't want to walk around town or whatever. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you, Brian. That'll be that'll be really helpful. Um, anything else on Trails Master Plan? All right. That was good. So we have next adopt or slash dedicate a park bench program. Revisit this. It's been a while. I think we all need just a refresher in our brains and we have new members. So I'm very kind of, glad that you're doing this because I've got a request. I, yeah, I saw that. So we have a request for a bench, a plaque. I'm she, guessing. What is, she was trying to buy a bench and wanted to put it oh in the Barker Meadows area or at Mud Lake. And I said, well, we've just made all these bench purchases and yeah. ProSab is going to be visiting the trip, the adopt a bench program. Um, it's for the, the fella who he passed away on second street this past winter. Um, so, uh, um, his family is coming to town to do a memorial for him on August 10th. Okay. I told her it was likely that that this this the adopt a bench program might not be ready yet. Yeah. I also told her that the benches probably won't be in their places. But yeah. She's aware of that. But is there, there any way that we could get a plaque done by then? I mean, we can get a plaque done, but there won't be a bench to put it on. And then uh, because the benches aren't in place yet. I mean, yes, we have our benches in Chapita Park, but she wants the his family wants the bench to be down in the Barker Meadows area. And so those benches aren't installed yet. Do we have we got the specified list of where they're gonna be? Did we um yeah, we ha I think that's kind stuff? of in the GoCo map. Yeah. We I think all so, it's been a while. Um and so they it, could choose. They they could choose and I think Maybe I've already given it to her because she seems to think she knows exactly where she wants this bench to be. Um, so that's one of the questions that I have for the, the adopt a bench that you sent to, to all of us, Jesse, is um, um, if, if someone buys a bench, yeah. uh, does that then, after 15 years, that bench goes back into the rounds? Because we have a bench that was bought by the family for Sarah, yeah. the Sarah's bench. And so is there a grandfather clause, say, for Sarah's bench? The benches that are purchased? It seems like there should be. I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Um, Sarah's bench should never be anybody's bench but Sarah's. It was purchased by her family before we even thought about it an adoptive bench program. And then we have benches that already have been dedicated, like Jeff Austin's bench. Um, Melinda's bench and uh, Keith Larson's bench. Yeah. And so then do we have to revisit with these people who have already purchased their benches to say, hey, well, we kind of revisited this and 15 years from now, you're going to have to redo your plaque. Although Keith Larson's I... plaque will probably have crumbled by then, but, um, or at least need, ma need oh, maintenance. Yeah. Um, I think, but yeah, those, I think those it would make things. sense just to say that, you know, all, all benches of previous adopted bench programs or donated benches are not subject to this. Accord. Okay. 
And then another question that I have is that it says in the adopt a bench document that um, that there were two benches that would be used for multiple dedications, and it says that we've got them already picked out. Do I? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, and also, we have a cost in there, and I'm just wondering where the cost came from, and because the costs are going up. And with the cost of concrete and the cost of benches and stuff, and it's it's different when when I do when I purchase one bench <laughs> is a very different cost from when I purchase five or ten benches. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of those are that, those are my questions that I had on the adopt a bench. As opposed to an exact figure, we could say. At market price for plaque and concrete, I think uh, that's a great idea. Because that that's going to change a lot, especially with inflation doing who knows what. Yes, at market price and current town fee schedule. Because that's another thing that's going to constantly change is the town's fee schedule. For right now, we charge fifty five dollars per person per hour, um, and then plus your cost of equipment, which varies. But um, that'll change. That's going to change next year. So that's under the the cost of a new bench with included plaque is blah blah blah. Yeah, is uh, subject to current market price and town of Netherland fee schedule. I like it. Yeah, I like that much better. Mm -hmm. Fifteen years from now, a bench could cost fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Cheaper. So sh I guess we should have. I hope it's comfortable. <laughs> it won't be. Lists the current price. That's like the current price is. No, I, I think we shouldn't even oh, talk shouldn't about even... it. If they want to know what the current price is, they should call me yeah. and I'll tell them what the current price is. I think is. that's appropriate. But we'll still list the three kind of options the yeah. price op like not prices, but the three options mm -hmm. that the three the options price can be assigned to. Yeah. 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 I think that's a great idea. And we can put those prices into the town fee, fee schedule because the fee schedule yeah. will be updated. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but just... but that was, was also the original notion here was that like these things cost money. I'm be kind of like I like <laughs> remove know. myself and it's like moving on another. Thing. Yeah, so, exactly. So the but thing it's is, funny we've come we, full circle. <laughs> if we could, like let's re maybe we should go back and revisit why we're revisiting this it's because <laughs> we brought this to the BOT and then and they. They were not happy with our suggested amount of 250. They wanted it lowered to, it was like, back well, no, to, I think we were like, had it up like a thousand, we had 500, a thousand or something, mm -hmm. like, like in line with all the other towns yeah. around yeah. here. You know, like, cheaper. Yeah. It was cheaper than every other town. Yeah, but still like way yeah. up, you yeah. know, way up from what was it to buy a bench? It was free. Yeah, right. right. We were just giving them away for free. used to be able to yeah. just nail whatever you wanted to a town bench. <laughs> so that's where this all came from. And it was this whole like, I, we did this like presentation that I put together and, and then it was just like, it was like kind of blew up. We we're like, we took it to the BOT and they were just yeah, like, it was like, what? no one's going to pay a thousand. Yeah. We we're like, everybody pays a thousand bucks for a bench, you know, like everywhere else. And so anyways, that was, uh, that's why we're revisiting it. It's for some background. Not that you need it. It's actually probably better without it. So but. what would be the process then? The person would contact, I mean, they contact the town and then you would just come back with the amount, the current amount. The current amount. Yeah. And, and, and of course, if, and of course, if, yeah. if something's going crazy or haywire, I'll have, I'll bring it to ProSab. Um, we'll have to bring it to ProSab if something is going funky with it and I need to revisit and come up with a different plan. Is the two benches thing designated for multi memorials? Is that, is that reasonable? You think is that is I, that complicated? I was confused by that. Yeah, I think that was the other. That was another thing that was suggested by the BOT oh, yeah. was to have a cheaper option. Like I adopt see. a tree. So would be like you don't get your own so, right. bench. Right. They They're, want like a lower level. I love the adopt a tree. There is a Chapita Park in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. And at their Chapita Park, mm. they have rocks, trees, and benches that are all dedicated. Yeah. And on the base, at the base of the tree is a little plaque, and it says this tree was dedicated in memorial of whoever. And 
uh, they, the tree was planted when that person died and that that's cool. Their families watched the tree grow into these beautiful, amazing. I love that. Awesome yeah. trees. Their, their Chapita park always inspires me. It's teeny tiny little Chapita park, oh, but they've done a great job. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, Pagosa Springs, if you're ever driving through, stop at Chapita park. Good to know. It's good I drove through the not too long ago. <laughs> so, yeah, and they put a beautiful, beautiful his history of Chapita herself on their pavilion. Oh, cool. 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 I'm, I covet that. <laughs> so Mark, Mark's there now doing wildfire training and he took a picture and sent it to me. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so glad you went. Cause yeah. Um, so anyway, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about adopt a bench. And so for a cheaper option, adopt a bench. I mean, maybe that's not a bad idea. Maybe that's not a terrible idea. Maybe we just have like this is just benches, and then we do a separate thing for other stuff, like to keep it easy. Why, why don't we just establish what we have in front of us, and then expand yeah. this program moving forward? Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a it was excellent a idea. Yeah. I would we do have some at that. <laughs> really cool. We have some really cool rocks. I don't know that I would want to get into rocks. Holy moly! That that. That could be a mess. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of rockers. <laughs> yeah. well, we have a thing. spot where we already Just have simple. pavers, okay. and that's at the teen center. And people can still buy a paver brick All at right. the teen center and donate a, a brick if they wanted to at the. And that money would go to the skate park. Does it? That goes to the parks department. Okay. Right. Oh, that's cool. So that's a lower cost. Yeah. Option. So I am trying to reignite the passion for those bricks because now we have a parks yeah, department. Yeah, that should that that should be part of the the media. I think. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Including. So and then. Do you remember how much that is for a paver? It it's gone by the wayside. Yeah. So that's what do we want it to be? That. Yeah. It wasn't that much. I don't know. The got, libraries are a hundred bucks for a little brick. I know they. Yeah. Just... So, and we have the bigger ones at the skate park, and yeah. we have the little brick oh, bricks. That's right. Yeah. The little tiny bricks. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what they were back then, but it's obsolete. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. I need to look in and try and find someone who does engraving like that. I know where I get my big stones done, but I don't know who does tiny bricks. Okay. Hmm. Got to be a pretty standard operation for any kind of like trophy company or right, yeah. I know they have them over at the Gilpin Community Center. Um, yeah, you could give them a ring and figure out who's doing it for them. I will. Uh, thank you I, for point, bringing that to my mind. I will call Gilpin and ask him. <clears throat> so yeah, I think absolutely. I think finalize what you've got, other than adding a few, you know, edits and whatnot, um, and then finalize it and. And then we can always expand. Yeah, I think it looks like previous. And the litmus test was like, previously, I was just going to privately buy all the benches in town. Yeah, because it was so reasonable. Yeah, it was like, yeah. And yeah. Just I don't know. <laughs> show how ridiculous it was, but now this plan makes it like I'm thinking twice. You really want it. Yeah, so yeah. When you guys are ready to put put it on the map of it. Um, we have Melinda's bench, Keith Larson's bench, Jeff Austin's bench, and Sarah's bench are the only benches that are claimed and paid for yeah. as of now. Um, Melinda's plaque isn't on her bench yet, but it is up at Public Works. I've had it for a couple of months. I was waiting for her family to decide which bench they actually wanted to put it on. Um, for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, Melinda was our are the front desk lady at town hall and she passed away at the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, so her family has finally chosen a bench and I'm going to put the plaque up. Other than that, um, we have, uh, 10, 11 benches sitting at public works, oh, getting are. ready to install. Oh, Yay. Yeah. That's great. That's a different, that's the next topic. Yeah, I'm excited. Nice. Yeah. So. My weird question is, we what is there a restriction on yes. what content goes on the plaque? Is there standard language? 
not in so much standard language. I would, I would not allow like cuss words and stuff. It's, right. It, That's what I'm talking. Like, it, should we put any sort of like reasonableness? It has to be approved. Standard. Okay. So yeah, it's it, subject to review. Yeah. yeah. It did. The every single plaque has to ha has to come through me, Miranda. Yeah. I think if it I've, says subject to approval by town staff, right? I think or not. Yeah, I think it, it said that before. They only, used to. Yeah, the only no thing is no commercial or business. Yeah, that's code. what oh, I mean. okay. we should have like yeah. profanity or slurs or something like that. Uh, it's subject to approval. Uh, yeah, no. That that being said, and this is goes into like the expansion of things. If a company wants to buy a new bench in town and yeah. put their logo on it, okay, we can have that discussion at that time. But the adopted bench program will be separate from anything like that. Adopted right. bench, yeah, I think is still for memorials. Works. Yeah, it's or it's, like if the works. if the group one, if the that was the group paying for the memorial, they could write their name on it, but not a logo. Right. I think it should say subject to approval by town staff yeah. And, yeah. and the appeals go to this board and, yeah, exactly. and then finally to the So if hypothetically, like, yeah, the, the library wanted to buy a plaque for somebody, they could say, I mean, it, they, it would still have to well, be right. approved, but they would be like. I mean, and they're nonprofit and they're part of town. I, I don't know. I think that would be something I'd have to run by Miranda. Yeah. Yeah. That would be I mean, group. The very last consensus. bullet says the final decision for requests will be determined by staff. We could just add either there or after the applicant may provide their own plaque for installation, mm -hmm. like subject to approval by town staff. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. And so on, on content covers, and design. Every, yeah. yeah. On the like, yeah. Keith Larson's went a little by the, yeah. you know, I knew it was going to be a wooden, um, big. It, but I didn't know it was going to be large. The wooden. Um, <laughs> so it is and big, and you, can, you can't lean back on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, you have to be able to stay on the yeah. bench. Yeah, right. the bench is no longer a bench. Then right. So I'm glad that we're making this language, and it's clear because it it will be subject to approval. Um, what What should our next steps be to get the board to consider this? Oh lordy, <laughs> I can present again. I mean, we barely, we barely have a BOT at the moment. I mean, it was put this now. season, wasn't do it? It, now. it might be, now. it might be the best time to do it because if you can cram it onto an agenda, then people will just be so fed up that they'll just say, yeah, whatever, adopt whatever bench you want. Yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> and the money all goes to parks department. Exactly. That's it. I mean, we're. Yeah. That was the idea. Is that the whole thing? Like with the whole, and I think it'll be well, much more well received this time. I don't know why. I just feel that way. Do I get? Does it say on yeah, the I hope the so. money yeah. is going to the parks? Well, right now, this this the current board is feeling a lot of financial pressures, so the idea of money coming in, yeah, might be better received than it was before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think before there was no parks department. <laughs> right. So there was like a harder to manage and everything. It just seems like you know it'll be received better this time. I think so too. I think we now be involved do it quite. with that because it's not the money doesn't just go to town. Like we need to specify, make sure that it specifies that it goes to the parks department. Right. Yeah. Because that's, that's what you're making your your like your donation to. Yeah. Is like you're yeah. saying I care about this. So glad we got a document reviewer too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this won't be passed as an ordinance, so it won't be yeah. law. Like, no one will have a no. right, right to a bench, right? right. Like, it's yeah. not creating a system where town staff are like forced to dedicate benches to people, you know, <laughs> but rather it's a, it would probably be passed as a resolution that will give us the ability to put it on the fee schedule. Yeah. And that's where it really matters. It, like, whatever we write in this document, like that is guidelines. Yeah. What's on the fee schedule is the reality. Yeah. So, like, do we need to have the current fees set for? Yes. That? So each year we're going to have to update yeah. the adopt a bench program's fees. That seems like a reasonable thing for us. Sure. To How do we feel about the current amounts? I think it's it's all right. I would. They seem low. Um, wait, yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah, about just the 250 and the 500 or so, yeah, it was like 450 for a plaque on a bench 250 for a plaque on a bench that might have lots of plaques on. And then I think it was 1300 on new bench. I think That's the new bench is where you say subject to 
subject to um, I guess we just current market some value, but for this year, yeah, so for five, each year we'll have to know. I, the I would say five hundred or two fifty. Yeah. Where, okay. Where, where four fifty came from. Five hundred sounds good. Yeah. Like no. I think that came from uh, estimate based on a recent plaque that was yep, trying to lower it for the BOT. Yeah, <laughs> they just they they, they wanted it. They well, want. I'm in the I'm in tiny yeah. baby well, they're not it really really needs money. So five hundred and two fifty sounds great. Well, the last BOT wasn't convinced that we needed a parks department either. So right. that's probably part Thank of you. the problem. I mean, I was trying to get up to like. You know, close to ten thousand dollar options. Uh, right. Yeah. Like, so you could really make a big commemorative thing. Wrong statues. But we'll make an NFT of the bench Ooh. and sell that for more. So need, that's the kind of thinking we need. That's, 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 no, it isn't. <laughs> All right. So if the is the if the cost of a new bench is a thousand, then. That plus a plaque should be fifteen hundred. Yeah. yeah, that way you have like a donation that goes on top of just the, you know, that can be used in addition to just the actual just raw the material cost, cost exactly. of the bench. Right. And it's. I think I'd have to look at what I just paid. Yeah. Okay. For my for my benches, I yes, I will get with you on what cost of cost. Yeah. Because and then I, the cost of the concrete and installation, and make sure we have all that. Yeah. Concrete. Yeah, because concrete's yeah. going up like mad. I mean, any and your, aggregate is going up like crazy. I think it's like you have like the cost of the bench and then you're, you know, maybe the donation on top of that that goes with it or something. Yeah. Like, oh, it's $500 yeah. donation on cost. top of the cost of whatever the current cost is for you to do a bench. Yeah. That's a nice way to baseline it. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're moving. We're moving on. Good yeah. job, guys. Um. Should we have one more revision of this, and maybe next meeting before we try and take it to the BOT? That sounds good. And then by then you could get us updated. Yeah, with the cost. Sure. That'd be great. Can I put edits directly yes. to the Google Doc? Yeah. Okay. I know there's been a kerfuffle about Google Docs. <laughs> yeah, as long as no one else has access to it. It's local. If I download it local. Yeah. Yeah. As long as no one else has access to the document from from here, well, you can technically see. one other person could. Two of us could have Download access to the document. Then... That might be a good thing just to like, uh, uh, like it took me a second to learn the sunshine laws. So maybe Eric and Jess, you're pretty good in those. Eric's really good sharing what they're about. I mean, I'm late right now on a quarter request, which is why I'm yeah. trying to do two things at once. You got quarter and two? Like, yeah. Oh, I got so eight quarter requests in one day. Good first mem like first meeting thing to go over. Yeah. Just I mean, it can be really, really brutal. Yeah. And it's if I don't do this, it's 90 days in jail. Like, it's serious business. So, oh, yeah, we got a harsh introduction to when I first started, too, because there was one email thread that more than two people responded on, and it was just, mm. it was a nightmare. Never hit reply all. You ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Anything sensitive, yeah. do not write it down. And you I think could, you can update don't. it on your own de device and either send it to like Nikki or Jesse. Yeah, is my understanding, but yeah. no, yeah. not to all of us. But definitely don't try to circumvent it by making an edit and then sending it to everybody yeah. individually. Yeah. Like that, it's just not worth it. We'll just talk about it. And Miranda sent us yeah. the losing yeah. license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I have to say the level of rigor applied to an adopt a bench program has been truly impressive. <laughs> truly <laughs> impressive. And I have to say people have been going by the book and doing this right, and I really appreciate that. Why All the work that's gone into this proposal, it's taken a lot to get here. Yeah. Like, everything would be a lot faster if we didn't have to if we didn't have to put through. <laughs> and so that's why when people ask, it's like, why does it take so long for on boards to do anything it's like well this i actually is. told Corey, the the lady who wants to adopt the bench for andrew i said it probably be quicker if you go and put it up mud lake um <laughs> because we're not really there yet but she really wants it at barker so okay well great she's she's willing to wait yay i also feel still that this is a good barometer for whether or not we are able to function as an organization at all. If we can run an adopted bench program, you know, there's hope. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Good job, guys. 
But what the BOT does with it is not necessarily your responsibility. <laughs> no. It's all of our responsibilities. Indeed, that it gets bigger. Okay. Any other questions on adopt a bench? All right. Next on the agenda, we have Barker Shoreline Trails and Stewardship Project, current status and summer timeline. And I will turn this over to Nikki. All right. So Barker Meadows is rocking and rolling. Um, we had so many huge rainstorms this Netherland got them all. I it, it was not getting hit like that out at my house, but it caused the Barker extension to rear its ugly head, which is the pond that forms in Gersio Field. Mm -hmm. I refer to that as the Barker extension because it gets deep. Um, so it forced our hand because it happened the two days, three days before the big bike race that we had done at Gersio. So we dug a trench put in a French drain and built up the trails on the east side of Gersio Field and completed the Crusher Fine area. If any of you have been down and around there, you might have seen that that front garden, I know Kat's seen it, the front garden around the Gers Jeff Gersio um, Memorial Ball Field sign has been planted and is completed. Um, we've had, I've had, uh, uh, 30, 32 tons of mulch dropped at the field, and so that's all spread. I'm having another 27 tons dumped on Monday, um, and that will be spread on the north north um, of the Gersio field line. Our playground equipment is in, our benches are in, our tables are in, our signs are in. They look fabulous. Um, they are so amazing. Well, really well done. Um, the musical equipment all came in this past week. I haven't even opened the boxes yet, but that really put a burr in my bonnet to get down to what I'm referring to. We, we were ca calling it the artist's nests is now called quartet corner, mm -hmm. um, because the, the playground equipment is called the quartet. So, um, quartet corner is, I am bound and determined to have quartet corner done and buttoned up by the second week of August. The Yep, Sweet. yep. So, um, as far as irrigation goes, all the lines have been run. The The biggest piece that we're hold, that's holding us up with irrigation right now is that we don't have a utilities staff to help us tap the line. So, we are hiring Bobby Grapes and his crew to come in and tap the line for us because if we had an emergency, they, they would be there. There are people that handle the town and water emergencies right now anyway. So Bobby Grapes is going to come in and tap that line for us. That we have the solenoids, we have all of the pieces and parts to complete the irrigation project once the line has been tapped. Talk to Chad about he's a, a Grapes employee about that this week, and he said, "Yep, we got that, no problem." So, um, there's something else. Something else that just happened to. I have two groups of teens working this week. Um, and they're going to help spread mulch and get the crusher finds down in the, the, the kind of intersection of Gersio and the amphitheater area. Um, the amphitheater group is meeting on the side. Jesse's part of that as well. And, um, I did talk to the city of Boulder about the drainage problem and they are not going to fix it until after we have Gersio field seated which should take care of some of that problem because theoretically once that's yeah right actually grass then yeah yeah so sometime in, probably in the september board meeting i'm going to be coming to you and asking you guys if it, if i have your permission to use some of my conservation funds to do do the soil amending and the grass seeding um gosh there's something else um so yeah, it's it's moving. It's moving fast and it's moving furious. And I have uh, one, well, my parks lead is amazing. He's great, Mark is great. Um, but I have one employee that is like, I had the 32 tons of mulch dropped thinking it was gonna take a week. He had it spread in a day. 
He's so gung-ho, and I'm so pleased to have him. Um, on that note, we've been pulling weeds like mad because we had to postpone completing the project last year. Yeah. Um, the, all of the landscaping berms that we put in, oh my gosh, they, yeah. they, they became, oh, they got overcame with weeds. Yeah. So we are pulling weeds like mad. Ah, that's what it is. Um, the three big trees are going to be planted on August 8th. Um, the, the, they're not huge. They're nine to 10 foot trees. Um, and what are they? I have, a. A white pine, a blue spruce, and an Austrian pine, an which is Austrian. This is very similar to a white pine. Cool. Um, and those are my three big trees. Those are getting planted by by Creekside Nursery. They warrantied those trees for two years, so they'll follow the trees. If they die, mm -hmm. they will replace them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went with Creekside. Those trees have been grown since they were babies in Boulder. So the shock of coming up the mountain. Right won't be nearly as severe. Yeah. Um, and I refuse to buy a Home Depot tree or a Walmart tree. I won't do it. <laughs> so um, they are not good for our environment and they don't survive. Yeah. I learned that lesson in 2016 yeah. when I planted one at Chapita Park. I respect that. I'm still fighting it. I love it, but I'm still fighting it. <laughs> the one that you guys all have to, all had to water last year. Yes. <laughs> and we still have to water that tree. It's a, it's a, it's a white pine and they, they grow up here and it, and it's, it's, it looks horrible, but he's, he's our Charlie Brown. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's moving and it's moving fast. And I assume still that by the end of August, I will be coming in with all of the plantings and needing volunteers to help me plant all of the things that I've purchased. I've got an account now with Harlequin gardens and um, they're wholesale. So I imagine it'll be end of August when I'm gonna need help installing benches and tables, putting all those things together. We're gonna pop pop a bunch of holes um, that that first, second week of August, we're gonna be popping holes with the skid steer. Okay. So um, Quartet Corner will be done, but then we're gonna have a bunch of other holes that we're gonna pop for some of the benches. So end of August, we're going to need help planting. We're going to need help benching and tabling. And um, don't think we'll ask for people's help with trash cans and dog poop stuff. But um, but there's always weed pulling, which will bring us to our, our next next subject eventually. Here. Will there be crusher fine in the to at quartet that time corner? Period? Yeah, in that area. Yep, that's all going to be done. Okay. So it's really. By mid-August, you're going to be able to walk down to Garcia Ballfield, and you're going to be able to look at the front sign, and you, you can already see it's, it really looks nice. It really does. And then you walk through, and you'll get, get to that far, the further end of it, and you'll see Quartet Corner all put together with the informational sign, the bench, the table. Nice. I'm dreaming big. It's going to be so pretty. It's I can't wait. That's so, awesome. Um, What's the deal with the amphitheater again? Amphitheater is. Uh, uh, <laughs> how long have we been talking about an amphitheater in this town since? Uh, I mean, it's a DDA. It's a DDA project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To put an amphitheater yeah. or some kind of performance yeah. space. And it is yeah. part yeah. of our post plan, post plan from 2012. But the DDA is really the only board that has the funding. Yeah. And that includes yeah, they, the BOT to, <laughs> to make like, something like that happen. Things like GoCo will not fund right that. Oh, okay, okay. That's kind gotcha. of there. Yeah. There are so many other grants other than GoCo, though. That's, yeah. that's the things that people tend to, to pigeonhole parks into GoCo, and it's there are so many other Not grants. Sure. But the OSU, well, basically. Um, but it's uh, yeah, actually, um, I got frustrated with the rink just recently because they tried to pigeonhole me on on a GoCo grant, and I said I'm not going for a GoCo grant. Maybe not for quite some time because we need matching funds and mm -hmm. I can't afford yeah. matching funds. It might be like, but there's like a musical arts performance grant or something. There's so many of those out there. There's grants through the state of Colorado right now that I'm going for to try and improve the rink and tennis. Okay. Um, there's, there's grants for grants. Yeah. Totally. So that's, that's the thing. We just need to be. 
Cause it'd be cool to like what we had talked about just briefly, like the idea of like an alive after five for you and some music down there, like next summer, you know? Yeah. We'll um, I would Friday love to see summer. things happen. Even if there's not an amphitheater there, yeah. it would. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it could be done without it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, um, I spoke with some members of the GDA at a recent kind of get together of various boards. And they said that they're still very gung ho about moving forward with the amphitheater project. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've been meeting down there. We met down there a couple, couple few weeks ago, Jesse. Yeah. Um, um, the, there was a Jesse and myself, Chris Perret, who actually had spearheaded the efforts back in the uh, earlier, like 2010, 2012 area. Um, and so, and a, and a couple of the DDA people. It was, um, and Tanya Corbeline. It was a good meeting. Um, we had some good thoughts and good ideas. I still, I, I still foresee it being a ten-year-old project. Yeah, I think I, that's I, people I, think it's going to be. It should be real quick. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not going to be real quick. It's not, especially with the drainage issues in that area. Yeah, the 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 land because it's Boulder City and well, for Boulder. for reference, the the big project that the DDA is. Seem, seem seems to be breaking ground on finally is the big springs parking project which is you know in front of the old oh yeah uh tebow building Where there it? and it seems like it's it's going ahead but you know that's a project that it's called a parking project but it really does solve a lot of storm drainage problems a lot mm -hmm. a lot of water pooling problems a lot of multimodal access to sidewalk problems so that's gonna it's gonna do a lot of things at once and create more parking spaces that project started as a what started out as a hundred and twenty thousand dollar project and now is a two hundred and seventy thousand three hundred thousand dollar project took them three years to yeah. like actually dig some dirt you know so so it's uh yeah that just for reference these are the kinds of time scales that we're looking at and they have yeah. money <laughs> and yeah. they have money and we don't right yeah so. Yeah, and so whenever you know that's that's why it's great having ProSAP because you guys have been a very proactive board, and I've appreciated that very much. Um, the previous ProSAP boards, although they tried, um, I wrote my own grants. Yeah, I, I, I did not have ProSAP support. I came to ProSAP after I wrote the grant for mm -hmm. accessibility at Chapita Park. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'll tell you right now that it, for me myself as a trustee. If the DDA came to me with an amphitheater project right now, I would say no. Yeah, they have too many things oh, that okay. they need to be that they need to finish. And they just we agree. can't just add another project and requisition those funds, which are borrowed off of future uh, property taxes that the town would otherwise collect. Like we can't be allocating those funds, you know, just indefinitely and putting them in DDA's bank account. Agreed. They just uh, DDA just agreed to um, restore and refurbish the pedestrian bridge as well. Parks doesn't have the money for it. Great. EOT, where 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 is Town and Ederland going to get more money? Um, so I went to DDA mm -hmm. with it, and it was unanimously approved. Well, that is something that is very important for their for their district. That's for sure. what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. So um, yeah, so they were going to fund that, and but I'm going to find the contractors, and yeah, I'm going right. to find the people yeah, to do the work, exactly. and it's going to happen quick. But that's because I'm going to do this stuff with the amphitheater project. It, it, we're we're talking years, but I do think we need to keep on planning, definitely, and, and improving the plan. Like when it when we we listed it's in the pros plan, massively contentious for years too. So it's not just a straightforward thing that everyone it isn't. agrees on. There'll it. be a lot of people coming out against it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Could there be like a? I don't mean to extend the meeting just to talk about this, but like something for future just to discuss, like next summer since you're on the improvements this summer. Like a temporary amphitheater that gets, you know, or platform or whatever that gets put up to really highlight the space. It's like, oh, this would be amazing to have an amphitheater that's permanent here. Well, Dora brought in their stage for the bike race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, How did that work? Was it, it was tru great. Trucker? Tru yeah. Yeah. Brought, yeah. So that's what, I mean, some of the festivals. Cool. Even Nedfest, like that's what they want. And, yeah. and for Dead Guy Days, they wanted a movable. They wanted just mm -hmm. a truck one in. Cause, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Then it's not permanently the there. Is, is kind of, yeah, it's, it's I a think smaller that's stage. It's the same stage uh, that Ned Jazz Wine Fest is going to be using in Chapita Park. Great. And we have the electrical hookup. But it seems yes. like if we yeah. have a fast, you know, as a town. have a space that they could truck a stage into. Yeah, that'd be great, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, that'd be cool. 
Because you don't really need an amphitheater necessarily outside of the time you're using it. No. In fact, it might cause you more problems <laughs> in a way. Yeah, and also Absolutely. there are very large festivals that happen in that space that yep. really don't, don't want, want an amphitheater. There. Yeah, yeah. So maybe like having a – Yeah, if they don't want it, then I don't think we should do it, honestly. You know, uh, I'm here to support everybody's are... wants and desires, yeah. but – um. Yeah. But yeah, we have a lot of animosity towards that particular. I guess the real thing is like, what's the outcome of an amphitheater? It's like, oh, the ability to have a venue space. Right. Mm -hmm. People the... say, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> but if we've you... got the two but now, yeah. that already exist, don't really want it. And if we do like, exist. if you plan it, then they don't there's exist. like all these lovely <laughs> events that could happen. Just like, oh yeah, we have access to a, uh, you know, movable one. Then like, yeah. oh yeah, every, fr every Friday in the summer we pull it out and there's music or something. So they're, they're cool. renting a stage. From somewhere else, or this is town? the town of Eldora, town of or Eldora. not town? Oh, I'm sorry, the Eldora, the ski resort ah, has okay. a stage. Okay. And um, Stephanie Andelman somehow uh -huh. has some kind of a link to that okay. stage, and she brought it in for the Ned Gravel Race yeah. and is bringing it in for the Ned Jazz Wine. Well, I guess the question is like, how much do those things cost? Right. I was just going to ask. Get one. Would you, you be have the storage interested in town owning a stage? Well, heck yeah. That okay. could be rapidly. You know where money like, comes from anymore, but it well, I mean, no, it would be it would be rentable. So someone would pay a fee to use the stage, yes. and yes. town would wheel. And then it could pay for itself. Yeah. You know, yeah, it would like, pay for itself. It could be something that's done every. Friday in the summers or something like we were talking about. I just but I think if on that the idea, ski like, resort yeah, of Eldora do. would be willing to rent the stage, then town might not be able to afford that cost right now. Yeah. So for now, I mean, yes, ultimately, someday, yes, I want to stay. I guess like yeah. let's just see what the costs are and yeah. then we can look at like there might be a grant for buying a stage to have that kind of stuff in your town, you know? Or, or I mean, this board – does have some money right or there's that, money you know we that could we have as well to that absolutely yeah i'm going to be coming and begging for some money yeah soon for a tractor and for grass seed and amending the soil mm -hmm. we're looking at probably seventy five thousand. i'll be asking for oh, okay so then we don't have that much money <laughs> well and i think that's that's one of the other things to no, discuss we, is like how do we generate more revenue for the board you know well, what do you have in there 127 or something i thought it was more two oh, something really Oh, okay. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, we have the um, the Eldora money that's been set aside. Just yeah. Like, um, which is what? I thought it was like twelve ish. That's very small. Fifty. That's very small. Um, I, and then we we have something. And then, we have. And then something. we had from the tungsten village. Right, and then we had some savings whatever. from Wingate. Okay. And then I don't. Oh, are Wingate. you talking about? Does Prosav have a budget? Or no, it's not. No, it's a budget. It's okay. town. It's, yeah, the town has but money. It's in the general fund. Parks. It's been allocated for certain purposes. Okay. So there's so not I, an actual parks. I budget. have to come and ask Dad if yeah. I can have access to my savings account. Right. You ask this board? Yes. Well, we recommend it. Okay. Really, so you're it's, asking the BOT. It's asking the board of trustees, yeah. but it's a right. Or if it's already been allocated in some way, then the town administrator might have discretionary power over it. But. Right. We offer our expert advice, and sometimes it is taken, and sometimes it is not. Often it is not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, that being said, that's about all I got on Barker Meadows. Uh, hopefully someday we'll have some kind of something amphitheater-wise down there. But for now, I'm going to do what, what, what Parks Department does best, and we're going to rock out a new park. And, um, and then we will build it. We have built it, and we'll see what comes. So, i got to admit, like, I'm... Go in, when I go down there, I feel nervous because I know like there's a lot of work to be done. Oh my god! So it, I, it's I I get a little bit palpitating when I like look at it, and it's like it seems like there's a lot to do I, in the next few months. I yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you feel. Yeah, I do. Honestly, I I got a little fussy and had to put myself in timeout a few times in the last month. Um, when I when I'm in timeout, that means I have to go pull weeds. <laughs> or or pick up trash or do things like that because uh i get really antsy i was waiting on the streets department to tap that line the utilities mm -hmm. department fell apart and finally i just said i oh, forget it i'm hiring grapes and then all of a sudden my guys just started like here here they're now the, here we go that's what i needed um and so when they started really busting out the work right before the ned gravel race yeah um and now i'm starting to see ah Okay, this is happening. So, 
So yeah. like, would it be useful, I guess, for us, what can we do to help is maybe start putting some feelers out for volunteers for the end of August? I have lists of volunteers for okay. people who have already reached out through your guys' yeah. outreach, as well as um, me just going to different meetings throughout the year and people saying, yeah. Okay. I think at the next ProSAB meeting is when I'll be saying, all right, it's this gonna is, be- These are the dates and times. These are the dates, these are the times. Okay. And um, yeah, I'm I'm finally starting to feel a little bit of more relaxed about it. Um, I have until March of 2023 to complete my grant. Yeah, but really, yeah, but like winter, October, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't want to be hanging out out there in the middle of no. March or April or February. Oh, so cold when it's windy down there. And plants wise, they have to be planted. I have to get the plants before. In before September. Freeze. Yeah. So, yeah, it has caused me many a sleepless moment. So do we know what's going on with dead guy days? They are not coming. Okay. Frozen dead guy days is not coming to Netherlands in 2023. I've reached out to them and they said, nope. Um, they are not coming to Netherlands at l the, the very least for 2023, okay. um, possibly longer. We told them in our meeting, <clears throat> in our after action meeting with them that if they did come to Netherland, that they had to not, that they weren't going to be able to use Gersio Field. Yeah. And that caused some fussiness with them. The idea of, we told them they could close down East Street mm -hmm. and that we offered different options to them, um, but nothing was good enough. And really, I'm very relieved, yeah. actually. I, I just didn't have it in in me to watch them destroy the park yeah. again. Um, so I do hope that they come back to Netherland after the park is all completed and done and it can handle a crowd like that. But next year it can't. It just won't be able to. Yeah, I mean, even even in the circumstance that it could handle a crowd like that, I mean, it would still need to be pre adequately prepared. Yeah. for that kind of traffic and they've shown such an unwillingness to do even the things that they say See, that they do acting. that it's very difficult to trust that they would ever and then they throw us under the bus roll well, and then they try to play oh well, it's town's fault because town won't let us do this or town won't let us do that but they say oh we cover the ground whole, you know, the, whole ground will be covered the, nothing was covered the grass that's between the basketball court and the parking lot wasn't always dandelions yeah right <laughs> yeah. it used to be grass yeah. and in 2015 they laid down wood chips in that yeah. area and they never cleaned them up right. and after that i had a weed infestation mm -hmm. that i still have wood chips there yeah. it, so i couldn't get them to clean up in 2015 2016 and 2017 they gave me one old guy with a pick stick <laughs> to clean up the entire <laughs> town. And this guy, although I, I appreciated his every little pick stick movement, mm -hmm. um, it, it, that's not acceptable. No. They left the town a wreck and I've been screaming for years. This, it's not that I don't like frozen deck guy days. I, I don't like it when people small, trash my stuff. A small department to yeah. deal with such a big. But in, if this were a larger town, yeah, they would be eviscerating them. Yeah, right? they'd be held. They'd like, oh, yeah. they would be held accountable, and they would have to pay. So they're supposedly going to Estes Park for yeah. 2023, although they're still going to use our visitor center to sell all their merchandise. So I, I don't know how this is all going to work, but supposedly they're going to Estes Park and. Um, and great. I yeah, but wish they'll go to Estes work. Park and they'll follow all of Estes's, Estes's rules and regs because because otherwise they're because they're going to have to. Otherwise, they're not going to have it. And that and that's that's fundamentally the thing. They feel like they can push us around. Yeah. They, but it was also engineering an excuse to leave Ned. Yeah. They wanted to leave Ned. Whatever we we said to them. Honestly, we them Ned go. needed them to leave us as well. Yeah. And whether or not they, that's and that's just because we they outgrew us. Yeah. And and if they wanted to do it in Netherlands, then think about selling Space. tickets, even for coffin races. Think about how are you going to, you know, control the size of crowd that mm -hmm. came into town. It's just the the first street area is just got decimated. Yeah. And I can't even 
tell you how heartbreaking it was to see the amount of damage done to Gersio in that area. God, oh, that was horrid. So, um, you know, I wish them all the best, and I do hope that someday they can come back in some capacity. I look forward to a day when Nedfest and all of those other different um, events that have left left Nederland or just dissolved. Nedfest uh, didn't leave because of me. Um, so I'm not really sure what happened there. I think. I mean, I was told from uh, an executive organizer that the, the volunteers were burned out. I'd heard that. I'd heard that they'd ran out of money or funding yeah. sources. And then yet somehow it was all the town's fault. It's the fault. town's fault, yeah. So, well, you know, and, and I actually got yelled at by a, a very vocal member of who likes to Cora request us. Um, <laughs> and she, and I, I said, you, who you mean? I said, <laughs> you have got to quit holding Chris Pelletier against me because that's, you know, there's a lot of people that had some hard feelings towards Chris. I loved Chris. I don't understand that, but, um, Chris protected the town and when it came down to it, he did what he thought was best for the town of Netherland and constantly was pushing for bigger and better. So it, it is, but I like what you're saying, like for Netherlands, smaller seems to be better. Yeah. Like smaller festivals. And smaller yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, if, like, like for, seems... for like us locally. Yeah. Yeah. Like it'd be super cool. I mean, people could come and be cool too, but like, yeah, like just come up like family friendly, like, yeah, like family friendly, like, oh, there's music, yeah. live music. And just maybe. wine is 500 people. That's, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It's super cool. I, Great. Chibita like... can handle a thousand. Yeah. And I think that I mean, our town is a thousand five hundred. Yep. Like, yep. It, it, it yeah. Yeah. Like way bigger than the, the town. So yeah. It seems Chapita can handle a thousand. I won't let events be like a lot of a little events. A thousand. Super cool. Yeah. And it'd be cool. Vibe. Yeah. Yep. I have a lot of great ideas for next year for the parks department town sponsored volleyball, town sponsored yoga, and then town oh, sponsored nice. yeah. 4th of July where we shut down first street and mm -hmm. do some fun events on first street. Um, I have a, a lot of really fun I think those ideas. things are all great. Cause they really contribute to like the feeling of a town, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'd really like, like to big bring... events are revenue sources and those are cool, but they're, they're different. Yeah. I'd really like to bring the community back into Netherland yeah. and instead of, you know, oh man, Ned Fest is this weekend or frozen decade is uh, you can't come near town this weekend. Yeah. Everybody Versus needs... like, oh, let's go into town. There's music. There's yeah, the no, the I really want to bring Netherland back to cool. Netherland in some respects. Course, yeah, I, I mean, most people I knew did not go to Dead Guy Days who live in town. We rented mm -hmm. our house out and yeah. left town. I stopped yeah. going to Dead Guy Days. Just hide. Uh, 2015, I think, <laughs> yeah. around yeah. the, I think the last The last time I went was probably 2011. You yeah. buy groceries the weekend before, you know, you're ready. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to do you, Move on. Okay, you just see community yeah. noxious weed pull since we're just on the topic? Yeah, yeah that's like, a I don't have a huge that, update. Is that either. Does, yeah, it does make sense to talk about weeds because you were talking about some of the, the berms and stuff that clearly need weed in. Um, hey, does anybody have a, a plan or date for um, a ProSab sponsored noxious weed pull this year? Is that a thought? We are going to think about it now. Great. <laughs> Do you buy all the bags? I don't know how your structure works. Do you guys motion to extend? Okay. No. All right. We just keep going. We just keep talking. <laughs> just keep talking. <laughs> It's usually my fault. <laughs> um, because I, I actually really need help in Chapita. And um, my my guys are amazing and they're doing their bestest, but I really need to schedule a noxious weed pull in Chapita Park. What and I time? don't know which Saturday. Oh. Like what time? Like what month? Soon. Okay. That's what figures. It's all flowering now. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. like, like a week now. from Saturday. I'm yeah. Like Saturday. I don't know what y'all are doing tomorrow <laughs> or, or Saturday, but um, uh, what day is it today? Hard to organize something in two days. Thursday. I can't really do Thursday. it. But mm, next Saturday. What's what day? Thirtieth. Thirtieth. No, no. Today is the twenty-first. Today's the twenty-first. This Saturday is the twenty-third. Right. Next, yeah, next Saturday is the thirtieth. Thirtieth. You guys can help. I will make sure Brian is there and supplies you all of the bags, and I right. will. Do you think Saturdays masters. or Sundays are better out of curiosity? I don't know. Maybe. You could do both. Just saying, if some of you can do Saturday and some of you can do Sunday. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever, however it works. Probably but should. Chapita really needs some help right now. Yeah, that's true. Um, and it's it's not just a Chapita. We got after town, got after uh, the bank recently. And I, I said to Cynthia, I said, yeah. 
oh my gosh, we can't just get after the bank. When you look at Ubon, they're, they, they look like they're growing scentless chamomile. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, so like, what, could we do like two areas, like do Chipeda on one of the days and maybe Barker or wherever else on the next day? Yeah, I mean, you could do a Chapita pull, and I think a Chapita pull would definitely be a worthy pull. And I think once people are educated, too, and they know what they're pulling, they can do it. I think, Certainly. I think from, like, a if we wanted to organize volunteer standpoint, I think I would probably yeah. pick a day. Yeah. And yep. then have different teams go out to different places. And then yeah. you could have, like, one of each of someone who knows what they're doing <laughs> you know, with those teams. Cause like I've been driving through town in my neighborhood like it is like, in that central, like, yeah, have a meet up somewhere, get, yeah. the, get the talk. Do a little bit a of a, like, talk, uh, here's where you can pull. Here's where you can't, here's what you should pull. Here's what you can't, here's what to do with what you pull. Yeah. And just like, Fair. we, uh, we ought to put up wanted posters. Yeah. That's yeah. Right, yeah. In fact, that's I still have, I have $3,000 left in my weed, but budget, um, <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> uh, the it, the park's budget has a five thousand dollars earmark on it yeah. that is specific to that. weeds, and I think I've great. I've only spent about two thousand of that this year. So, mm -hmm. um, yes. I have more money to run ads. I have money to hire somebody to actually come in and spray, but I am not a fan of that. Yeah. So, um, if but if that's the route that I need to go, I guess that's the route that I am going to need to go. But, um, really. Any road, Netherland has a right of way, and so we can pull weeds in a right of way on a road zone. If yep. we were pulling our way down First Street so, and yeah, up Second, of, okay. so like along any road, yeah. like within town limits, yeah, this after it's the a, side of it's a sixty roads. foot right of way on every road from the center of the road. You got thirty feet in either direction. Where can I go for information about this particular weed that's blooming right now? Because I'd love to get it out on social media as soon as we can, like anything we can do to help. The so bar part has be been running, honest. running right. our ads for us. So I can, it, it, we can have, and Barb kind of put it on Facebook. It's on, on net ads, yeah. Is it? I, I, I don't really ads. follow that. There's stuff. been like, and then there's town Facebook page. Has Ned, Facebook has four it. or five different noxious weed posters with descriptions. So anything that's on the net town page, we can always push. Yeah. push and we have away. Rhea's guide. She yeah. developed. So Raya is the one who said she Raya used to spray for us and isn't spraying anymore. Right. No, but I mean she had she made a whole guide. Yeah, she, she made a said, great said guide. Exactly I, what to do with the variety of plant. Uh just so I think we should do thirtieth of August. That makes sense. Saturday. Thirtieth of August. Sorry. July. July. Thank you. Great. Not, not August. Uh July. I'm like, well, they're all gonna be seated by the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um and then what would be the timing that makes sense? Morning. Would, What's that? 10 I would say 10 to 1. Okay. You don't even start it earlier. You could start it at 9 and then just tell people to show up whenever they have a But I moment. think that presentation that you give is yeah. really cool. Like to have right. like that, the meet and then get the talk. Then that gives I would have the... everyone like gather at Chapita. And All right. Then... 10 works for me because Saturday's my day off. And then go out to like. That's good. Four That's what I'm asking. 10 good. Are you sure? Would you prefer Sunday? Do you work on Sunday? I do work on Sunday. Why don't we do Sunday? Because, Sunday like, let's respect you need some time off, you know? Hey, thanks. Agreed. Be tired right now. A board <laughs> meeting Tuesday. That is perfect because that's my day off. That's a weird sentence. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> Sunday, 31st of July. It's 31. Sunday, yes. 31st. Yeah, there's 31 days. Sunday, the 31st. Yeah. And can we, would this be the sort of thing we can like sort of blast all over? Like yes. Paper and social media. Sunday, to do it. 31st. How many came oh, last year? Yeah. When ProSab sponsored. Like two well, years ago, wasn't it? 12 or 13? Yeah, about 12. Was that two years ago? Cheapers. I think so. 20, I think it was 2020. Anyway, um, did you guys do one last year? I thought you did one. Wait, it was just Pat and Macy and... I don't think so. My was, miracle There woman? was one last year. Oh. Yeah. I remember you mentioning it. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, um, melted into one. I don't know what year it is. Yes, I will make sure I have plenty of bags. Spread the word. Get all your friends. Anyway. But they did. These guys last year. Oh, pickup well, trucks. Hey, your pickup truck could we do this every day. Um, tomorrow? Are you working tomorrow? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Not planning on it. Today is my day off as well. Oh, okay. I, mean, how I was going to say, do like a, just a video. I could come and we just do like a video on a phone, you know, just 
these are the weeds. This is what it's about. Yeah, We'd love for you to come out and then that could be shared everywhere. Certainly. I'm, I work some the, theoretically my schedule okay. is Sunday to Wednesday. Okay. So seven maybe, to five. Maybe Sunday or Monday, like I, we could get together and you could actually like show me, I would learn <laughs> something which would be valuable. Yeah. yeah. And then we Sunday and Mondays are easy. Mostly Sundays are real easy for me because okay. I don't have any employees. Cool. We'll figure um, something out. I'll text you and we can make it like a short video. Then I'll text to that everybody and can be shared. Get it up on TikTok. So, I mean, yeah. how we did it last time was we met you yeah. at Chapeda Park and you gave a little talk, like a speech right. to everyone and showed us what to do. And then we all got our bags and we were sent out and then we filled our bags up. And then there was a town mm -hmm. park, a town truck was parked That's at, cool. at Chapeda where we could bring the, right. the back to. Yep. Sounds awesome. And it seems like a little, little video with that information would be super yeah. cool. Yeah, what huh? you need to bring versus what we'll like bring a glove and if you want like a little weed tool yeah. or something. Although, you know, well, if we're going to concentrate yeah. on scentless chamomile, they probably yeah. won't need a tool. Yeah, that's true. Pulls so nicely. Yeah. And you can sell it at Mountain Co op. So. I don't know. <laughs> Scentless, buy it. No, I don't make, make, make scentless some tea, tea. <laughs> <laughs> flavorless tea. I do have Sounds fun. To Chapita Park to harvest our weeds because they because they know I don't use chemicals, so they have come and made dandelion wine. Oh, that's cool. That's joke, but it's cool. cool. And yes. chamomile tea. So many out of scentless chamomile. Cool. And the dandelion wine was a really nice treat when I went camping one year. Mm. So is there anything else we would need to, you're going to make a video? Yeah, I'll just make a that up video. On, you know, I could. Yes. I could make, and we can just spread it. Yeah, just share it. Like, share people. it with everyone. Yeah, like, yeah please. Groups, so like, these guys had 12, which I was, that's why I was asking, because I was super impressed. I bet we could get more than. And that's what yeah. <laughs> I'm like. That's a good number. Cool. That's like so. a, make a little wager here. Can we get more than 12? And, yes. um. I'll give you all a town of Netherland pencil. Okay. I'm Sweet. Say twenty. There we go. Do children count? Children <laughs> count. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, no, I'm just saying in terms of the wager, do children count? All oh, right. <laughs> Absolutely, children always count. In, do in people the, we can force to be there? In count. the land of parks, yes. children definitely count. Yeah. Um, where else would we want, and I guess we can just tell people we're meeting at Chapita and then depending on how many, Send like, decide if there are other, but. Town Hall. Town Hall would be. First the... Street. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The Panther sign. Um, gotcha. I want to do a Big Springs. Clinic. The Fisherman's Lot since. Uh, oh, there's so much. The, the skate park <laughs> area. I can't even keep my yard. There is the Barker Meadows. Stuff maybe yeah, you Barker could get like would be useful. Oh yeah, sent off some ice cream, cream if you volunteer. The, the sidewalk. That, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the the like the stuff, but I noticed behind the sign, I was like cursing it while walking. I get a lot of complaints around the post office, but you know it's not townland, but. Psh. Yeah, I think that they're not going to stop. Just, like, yeah, where can we and can't we? Um, like I said, any, any roadway, any ed, road. edgeway, yeah. any, anything right off the sidewalk, anything like that. Okay. Ubon, I'm not kidding. Ubon is overgrown. Yeah. It is the worst of the worst. So perhaps we could reach out to Rashawn and see if it's all right with her. If we took it to her scentless chamomile. Yeah. It's ridiculous. She'll probably be more interested in that than us telling her to pull it. I think so. <laughs> Nikki, did you hear that Glenna passed? I did. Yeah. I was actually just going to say that. Yeah. I that just actually, I got a little tear in my yeah, eye when Emmett told me. So the lady who owns the meadow that's behind the post office, she just she passed away this weekend. Oh. Really? Oh. And she was she was an awesome like historical genius, advocate and genius, and wealth of knowledge, and a really lovely, lovely lady. Lovely. So I just hope I hope too that. Mm. Yeah. Good things will yeah, happen with that. Happen with that land and with her legacy and oh god. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, talk about a good dedicated bench. Um yeah, we could put another cool. bench at Gillespie. Yeah. Or something. She was a gem. Yeah. Or even at the cemetery. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, so yeah, if you guys could plan a noxious weed pull, I will be there in support and however I can and would absolutely thank you with, from the bottom of my heart because Chapita's looking rough this year. And I think I just got spoiled because last year the ladies were doing such a rock star job. And now this year I'm like, oh, 
But we were doing so well. Well, all the rain too, I bet. It's yeah. been such a wet year, I bet that's... In Netherland. Yeah. You go, go oh. this way, it's not wet. <laughs> it's We've been so lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very lucky in Netherland because my house is dry. Yeah. So. so if we can't communicate with each other between now and this, how do we communicate with each other? Like a good way to do it is just email me okay. if you want to, and then I will compile it into one and oh, then send so it sorry, all back but okay. <laughs> And you can communicate you with can communicate one person. Or yeah. You can communicate with the whole board, but just make sure that nobody, like we don't reply to you. It. Can, you can send an informational uh, note to the board, but no one can reply. Yeah. Got it. And you can send whatever you want to me. Yeah. yeah. Or Miranda. But yeah, if you have a question that you want answered, and then they have or to Lisa. all send it back to one place, and okay. then okay, got it. Beautiful. I know. Okay. All right, we got it. Yay! Well Yay. done. Thank you, guys. Thank I really. You all. Um, I, I'll do. We'll do bike. I do have some other business. If if I what could just mention it. Yeah, we have one more thing on the on the. Agenda. Oh, bike park. Yeah, I can give a quick update. There's not a whole lot at the moment, but we. Because we went down the route of looking at asphalt as a surfacing potential and uh, the folks from Velo Solutions who built the bike park in Boulder and Erie and uh, the pump tracks rather in Boulder, Erie and Broomfield, they're like world class, amazing. Um, they were in the area. We reached out to them and they just happened to be in the area to do the Erie opening. Mm -hmm. And they came up to Netherland and walked to Peter Park with us and gave us a huge education about all the different various surfacings and asphalt and they even said that they did a project that qualified somehow as carbon negative um which was super interesting i haven't had a chance to look into it personally yet but i don't know how that exactly works to be fair but i don't know if it was like carbon offset spot or what mm -hmm. it was. so there's some caveats i'm sure but it was somewhere in uh, switzerland i believe because uh, they, ha they have a their main offices are in switzerland and then they've got offices here as well like in the u.s and uh, so that's the big update is that we met with them. They gave us a big education, uh, Jesse and I. And actually, we met two of the staff, your staff, who were amazing. They just happened to be there. So I was like, hey, come over here. I like, I was like, come over here and listen to this. And, you know, and tell Nikki. They didn't tell me. Well, ask him. Uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't remember names off. Brian, Brian is one of Brian them. Brian and. Devin. Devin. Yeah, Brian and Devin, I think. Awesome. They asked him about it. They were, it was a little while ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Jesse called me with 45 yeah. minutes to and go. I think and I, said, hey, can you like be here for 45 to... minutes? And I'm like. And I was seeing if CT could join. He, But then, you know, he was having a baby. Like, well, he wasn't yeah. having a baby, but, you know, his wife was. And um, which congratulations, by the way. And uh, Thanks. so it was really informative. And it sounds like there's a lot of options. And then. You know, it's a route to explore, like, if we do that, if we want them involved at all, because they do these world, the, the tracks are really incredible, and they do a great job with them. So I was trying to put some information together and get it out to everybody or to you, Jesse, and then you could send it out to for some. Yeah, you're welcome, to, welcome to send it out. Yeah. And uh, so I just been busy between that and now and then. So no major updates other than that. But we learned there are yeah. asphalt's not just asphalt. That's There's a lot to about it. About speed sometimes. Yeah. Just do it do it right. Yeah. And so that was the thing is like, well, how do we do this right? Yeah. You know, they've done these beautiful projects all across the world, all these parks. And one benefit to note is like if they do the project, you can host a uh, an event and like a Red Bull puts on, I think or not Red Bull, some of them are sponsored by Red Bull, but they're just sanctioned uh, pump track races. And so, like, if you lived in Netherlands, you could grow up training, riding, learning, playing on a sanctioned pump track that would then you could compete in and competitions could be hosted in. But as of now, they only do competitions on the Velo Solutions tracks because there's enough of them and they know they all qualify and, like, meet the requirements when they build them. Um, so it actually could be a unique additional opportunity for, like, you know, pretty interesting events that could be hosted on this type of pump track. Um, and yeah, so it kind of changes the nature of it a little bit for sure. Certainly changes the budget, but they're really good at helping you understand how to fund it. And, uh, and the folks in Boulder are totally willing to talk to us and explain their whole process with what they learned from doing it with them. Uh, which well, they did it with them. Okay. Yeah, they did it with them. Erie did it with them and Broomfield did it with them. Got it. 
And they, they uh, went and they were having a meeting with the folks at Boulder like right after meeting with us. And uh, they let them know that we'd like to talk to them and learn, you know, what their experience was and from an environmental standpoint and a building process. And they have all kinds of like, you can be really involved where your community does a lot of the work or they can do it all. Mm. So there's a spectrum. I'll, try, I'll get that information together and cool. get it out to everybody. Very sensitive about money right now. So I'd love to see what it costs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is like, uh, you know, funding it from other sources, like, yeah. you know, the bike community has got money and yeah. they're psyched yeah. on the stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't no. necessarily have to come from an existing budget. Yeah. I think that uh, probably it, from what you're describing yeah. now, uh, one of the, one of the ways to go might be to actually form a nonprofit or use a nonprofit that already exists yeah. and have a solid relationship with town, be able to budget in what town would be willing to pay for it, depending on revenue generated and raised. Right. So that then you could actually have a framework no for problem. fundraising. Yeah, you, you could get individual donations. You okay. could get, you know, that like, makes sense. but setting up that framework would be important. So I think to have that framework, we would need plan. Yeah. And, and that's that would the thing be ratified us, actually, by the BOT. Great. Yeah, that right. makes sense. So and I think it's actually a really worthwhile route to go because we went from, you know, a, this idea of like a dirt pump track to like something that could be a really wonderful um you know true asset to to town beyond just like oh we built it and then in five years you know we it's hard to maintain yeah um yep and then it brings like oh we have a, a pump track event every year you know a series of races so you're not you're not ruling out the dirt are you well i'm not i'm not ruling out but jesse's a little bit ruling out the dirt he'd really like to see it paved and done right because he doesn't he's he's he was getting a little hesitant around the dirt with the maintenance aspect but he's only committed to three years like that's our concern is this yeah. exactly i agree that's the, so I, that's at least the with thing. the dirt track if it doesn't if we don't have the capability to maintain it beyond then we could just flatten it and it's good it's good well that's yeah. another question though is jesse going to be able to maintain this kind of a track uh, yeah for, well, for any amount so of the time? beauty is with this type of track the one that mm -hmm. i'm talking about because we learned this and that was some of the specific questions we asked was that they've had these tracks out there for 10 plus years at this point and the only kind of maintenance that they're seeing being done, they've done it, done them in like, high altitude places. Yeah, high altitude mountain places because they've done a lot in Switzerland too, which is cool, yeah. uh, which is helpful to know. And we asked them; they're doing one in Leadville right now. Oh, okay. so they that that is qualifies. And uh, but so we, I might actually reach out to them too, because that's a super similar environment in that way. And uh, they basic asphalt like patching is all you need to be able to maintain these things. They don't, they're not having alligatoring issues and all these things we were all concerned about, you know? Cool. Um, and so that they said like, you don't need anything special outside of basic asphalt utility sort of stuff. And uh, that would be like getting with you and see what, what kind of- That's what I, I would do that. I would okay. have Jesse's crew do that kind yeah. of stuff. Cause we do that with the basketball court anyway. And that's like, from what I understand, really reasonable, super cheap stuff to do over time. Like, mm -hmm. and they just, you know, if it gets bigger than I think it's like two an inch or something. They had a specification there. Like then you patch it and you're you're good. And it's, they're they're just seeing them hold up incredibly well, and they've got mixes, and you can use an environmental mix for the majority of it. That's like recycled stuff, and then you can surface it like the final little bit with a, mm -hmm. you know what is a good ri a rides well. We got our skate park when Randy Lee created Ned Skate. Yeah. Right. Okay. And he created the nonprofit and he got all the donations and he even mortgaged his own house to get us the skate park. I'm not going to do that, but and thank you. Um, <laughs> but he did, yeah. he put all the donations together. They all came, but we could Ned do skate. like, we could make a nonprofit, you know, Ned pump track, whatever. And then all it was, happened. it was the town of Netherlands skate park, but Ned skate. I mean, they did, they had all the control, they okay. had all the control. Um, well, we could certainly do something like that. I'm right, but we, we could come up with like, an agreement, yeah, right? Like, absolutely. If we, we, if we, we formed a new nonprofit. Ned Skate did that because there was no parks department. Right. And okay. There was no one to do right. maintenance at all. So if you formed a nonprofit just to merely connect, yeah. con do fund collect yeah. the funding. Yeah. Sure. Um, that's what I, mean, that's I think it's a, a good idea. I okay. mean, it would, it would need a board and, you know, sure. according to 501c3 rules, you need to be responsible for the way the money's used. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like it would follow all those things, like, but that's know. totally doable, yeah. you know? 
So it's a little longer term, like it, it'd be a next summer thing at a minimum, you know, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of money for that kind of stuff. Uh, and so Nikki's game, as far as where to put it, you know, I'm interested. Yeah, and if, if the, the plan can be like with an estimate of probable cost, that's the nice thing. Not, we not, can get exact. Yeah, costs it doesn't have to be like yeah. a, a full workup and engineer design. What we need is like a concept, right? And right. an estimate of probable cost, and that can be fundraised around. Yeah. Or, but before fundraising, we just need to see if the community buys it or not. I'm yeah. definitely interested in materials because and, you will get blowback. From yeah, the yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why it was really interesting because we we were uh, really talking to them, looking at that landscape, particularly and saying. You know, how do we do this and be way ahead of whatever sustainability things are out there currently? Like, how do we do even better? You know, cool. And uh, they were really psyched about that. They thought, man, this is really cool. So, yeah, could be a good way to pursue it to have a, a really long term thing that we put in place. It would take longer than just dirt, but it would probably be the right way to go or a cool, a very cool way to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, something that's going to last. Yeah, something that's going to last. That's that's the bottom line. Yeah, I don't know what that would actually look like. We should actually, if you want to work towards it. Yeah, I will. Then, yeah. um, then we should talk to, you know, some other folks in in town and, and make sure that we do it the right way. Yeah. Because I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know how you approve. I guess a pump track. Like I don't know what kind of like if an organization were to be formed that's external that wants to build something on town land. Right. Like what kind of proposal are they going to submit? And I guess it's a, really a question for a town attorney. Like what's the best way? Yeah. To formalize that relationship. Yeah. Like how clean, does that even work? Clear way where it doesn't create problems down the road like every other, you know, nonprofit initiative that town right. has been involved in yeah. has always had. It's always been problematic, right? So how can we do this right this time? Yeah, yeah and that would be the goal. You know, do it right. Do it once. There's models you could kind of like the Boulder County like would have lots of those yeah. instances. And we were just talking about doing it for for the PD for the police department. It's like yeah. it's got to be a separate nonprofit set up to do fundraising for them. And okay. Like, yeah. So this is going to be something that I think Ned has to take more seriously. Is like go into our arrangements with with nonprofits in the community, yeah. uh, but in a way that is healthy and not toxic. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> But the only other thing is like I, I had a handful of people come to me at the farmers market charrette and saying um, mostly hesitation about the downhill aspect. Oh yeah, yeah. On, uh, uh, the outside of Chipeda and on land somewhere else. Um, I have just, I, just I have gotten this. a lot of people walking up to me being like, yeah, this is what they do. Starting to get mad at me for that. People, Oh, I had several yeah, people like here. really not happy about that. The idea of people, people like we already down. have a bike. we already have downhill courses. They're just over on Magnolia or they're just up over here. Why do we need? I've gotten some pushback on that. None, okay. None push back to on the pump track, but not still no, not on the pump not on the pump track. Yeah, yeah. kind of running with that at the moment. Yeah, so is I would say different downhill. Yeah, yeah, we're looking. So a pump track is like um you know just like the flat where you're rolling and moving and pumping, and then we were looking at like. In addition, downhill somewhere, because we don't really have good downhill. You know, we've got great cross country. We don't have like features with like jumps and berms and stuff like that. <laughs> that but isn't that what West Mag is? I mean, that's what almost all mountain bike trails are. around here are. Really. See, that's, that's what we're hearing. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people. I mean, I ride a lot of Just that. And I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I just rode some great downhill yesterday. Yeah, my husband rides around Reynolds, like the whole Reynolds Ranch area. It's just oh, yeah. single track that's downhill. Fine. Yeah, yeah we well, that, we there's like single track yeah. downhill and there's like all the secret trails and stuff that, you know, I won't say the names of them, like where they are, but <laughs> like that, uh, but that well, is downhill the riding, but there's a lot of like jump oriented, berm oriented downhill. There's like a little bit, the Aspen Alley, you know, Magnolia, but overall there's not like a, a, like a dedicated where you can like do laps on a downhill course. We just Unless need that, Eldora I mean, to open in the summer. I mean, Eldora. Yeah. That's like, I guess it depends on, like, yeah, 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 I, mean, I don't, I don't, I have like, like there's technical stuff, there's probably yeah. technical yeah. stuff, but there's, not and them. there's like flowy anyway, cross country. But probably not. It's not them. Yeah. yeah. No, it's the, but anyway, I was just curious. Well, no, no, just I didn't know there was first. another thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. It's going to be over. It was, it has, yeah, so far it's been a big pushback. That's the thing. I don't know if I need to ride in town if you can ride in town on the trails. Well, there's like a whole culture around just like, um, riding. 
well, you know, gumps and berms and okay. like tabletops and stuff like that. And like, you yes. know, those things don't exist. Trinkles, but even, even, but even if it did, yeah. like I mean, they have parking lots. That might be a different doesn't. thing, but I wouldn't call it a downhill you know, park because that'll we'll take back we'll for sure. Well, they're building a human. Yeah, they're pretty common. They are. But, you know, it's okay. Well, that's another thing to. So yeah, sure. from from your it's talk about to be a, from the boards that you've gone around through. Yeah, I've had that sort of people. Like I heard you're doing it. You want to do a downhill, and I don't like this. Yeah, it's funny. That's interesting. That was the pushback, not the pump track. Well, we'll do pump track first, and then yeah. But the but the downhill might be a good. Uh, it's actually a great like thing. red herring. I know. Uh, I for the pump track. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. Like, oh, right. Well, I think there's a lot of value in having a dedicated downhill area. So I'll, I'll like, you know, look into that continue. Like, I think there's an interesting component there that just skills that you don't develop other places very easily. I am not well positioned to comment because I do not. Yeah. I grew up riding one and it's awesome. And it's totally different than cross country and, you know, downhill backcountry single track riding and stuff like that. And both are great, but they just are different as well. Okay. Yes. Maybe I'll door will open it downhill and then yeah. that'll be no one's dream, right? Yeah. Talk to Brent. So there are some trails being built this summer. Mm. I met and talked to some of the trail builders and Interesting. we are working on some of those connected trails between Eldora and Jenny Lake. Oh cool. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. That is hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so I've met like, like a couple of like they came and got library so cards. Cool so. Me. <laughs> like <laughs> tell me. Summertime. Prosap has spies everywhere. I don't if they're building trails. I mean they should be. That's their everyone else is open. Exactly. I feel like it's only a matter of time. If they want yeah. to continue to be viable, they're gonna have to open. They're gonna have to be open later than than April. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not working for parking. Yeah, especially if the season doesn't start, start until January. Yeah, winter doesn't really just say yeah. they start right. till May. Yeah. yeah, they've got a wildlife corridor, and yeah. part of their memorandum is they're mm. like the, they're, they're, they're the mountains must uh, operate in the summer. But how there's other bunch of private property. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, anywho, um, can I other business? Yeah, so my other business is that I think that it, it would be interesting if we discussed. Not now. It doesn't even have to be soon. Um, creating a fund in the town's budget for parks. That makes sense. Yeah. That's a really and idea. recommending that to the BOT. I'm not a big fan of this whole everything's in the general fund strategy that we have. Yeah. Which is like do that next year. Well, it's very very messy. But especially and if we do adopt a bench, it needs to go. Well, it provides flexibility to frankly, to the people who don't need it. <laughs> so it provides yeah. flexibility to accountants, but it doesn't provide a lot of fl flexibility for the departments that are actually using the money. So to know what you have available is really powerful thing, even if it's a little bit, yeah. even if it's $10,000 in the account, it's $10,000 in the account that you know you have available and you can plan based on that. Okay. When it's just, yeah. well, here's how much the general fund has. Right. Like, how much do we budget to parks this year? To me, that's a crazy way of operating, and we shouldn't operate that way. There should be rollover for parks. Absolutely agree. And if we make money, we should be able to have it. <clears throat> well, so re like parks revenue should go into, you know. Yeah. So like and I have to... week, the money that we have already earmarked is, that's just it. It's just earmarked. Like it's not actually in. The <laughs> yeah. Right. And in exactly. Fact, there is no year, parks fund. With Rita being newer. That's crazy. When Rita was new, um, she didn't know that I had, so Parks has a $15,000 budget line. And of that $15,000, 5,000 of that is earmarked for weeds. For weeds, yeah. And Rita didn't know that. And I, I said well, something There's nowhere that it says that. Yeah, so she had to go looking for yeah, it. Yeah, you have I to think find it in a resolution somewhere. It would <laughs> actually clarify things for Rita a little bit better. And yes, yeah. this coming 2023, Dang. I have to create yeah. the parks budget. And what am I gonna need oh, for crusher yeah. fines? What mm -hmm. am I gonna need for payroll and et cetera? Huh. Um, but to, to have something where we have an actual yeah. parks, such a good idea. Yeah. So, uh, and, and it would, it would, we, w I think we would recommend something robust, right. And mm -hmm. that has like, what are the, yeah. what's, what's the, the income actually, lines yeah. into this fund? What are the outgoings from this fund? Million yeah. bucks. How, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but let's say we are selling memberships to rink. 
We or, will be. Right? Yeah. So we're doing that. Rinky. We have to we have to we have to specify that those that, that money will yeah, be shared. Through. And I apologize, I have, I have to leave. Center will take their skim off the top. Yeah. Right? Which is their admin fee or whatever it the might be. The community center takes for pickleball and that's it. Yeah. They take rent for pickleball. Well, Don did say that if she if she's doing memberships for rink and tennis and all that, you'll only that do you memberships want for pickleball. Okay. Um, but it's different, and okay. we'll be involving Miranda in that. So don't listen right. to Don too closely. On all that. right, we'll see. Yeah. Well, however it works, however those memberships get sold, whatever administration overhead needs to happen, I think is fine. If it's a reasonable percentage, the rest should be dumped directly into the parks budget. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brink brought in sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars this last season. And they have a two Yeah, month right, fee. exactly. Is they they bring in good money. I do like your idea of just like addressing the revenue issues because we always say like, oh, there's no money to that. It's like, well, how how can we address yeah, that? Yeah, even if there is no money in the account, at least there's an account with no money in it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, ten bucks. Yeah. And well, and then just going like, well, how can we generate more revenue exactly. for this? Because but right now if you're just generating revenue for the general fund. There's not a lot of motivation to right, like do, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. For sure. And it's very difficult for people to make a donation to parks. Yeah. Right? No, they yeah. can't. Yeah. yeah. Unless, okay, here's a donation for parks that's specifically earmarked for this specific, Excellent. and it's still very difficult. I mean, so, you have to budget donations anyway, or you can't spend them, which yeah. is really weird. So, and you only budget once a year. Yep. So you could get a $50,000 donation, but it's not budgeted, so you can't spend it. Yeah. Yep. I had a two hundred two hundred and thirty seven dollar donation for the government is does years. not work like nonprofits. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. <laughs> it's designed not to work. <laughs> yeah, and they were probably like, we can't. <laughs> but yeah, so that that was my other business that I think we should have. Now that we have a parks department, we should have a parks budget. I totally agreed. I guess my last other business was that I did send an email to Matt Henry to try and get him to come and update us on mm -hmm. the, the USFS oh, projects yeah. that we're supposed That's to right. be giving feedback on. Mm -hmm. And I'm just waiting on hearing back from him. I'm just going to, I'll resend the email and but I'll wait a week and resend it. And... Is he our new Forest Service guy? He's old. The old. Yeah. yeah. Ah. But yeah, we. There's like a. Oh, you can explain it better because you understand. Yeah. I mean, Brian, Brian should probably explain it. He sent some, some message out to the forest service to ask about an issue and the response we got was we're, we're still waiting on process feedback on it was like the multi like magnolia trails yeah. and camping something else process feedback yeah and it was like we're not going to do anything until we get feedback from process on these issues and we were like what oh, issues <laughs> what well, yeah no. What? These, these are like these are initiatives from 2016, so we, uh -huh. have, we would have no knowledge of them yeah. unless I mean, thankfully, Rick Ryan contacted him and just we're like, well, why would we know that we're yeah, yeah. supposed to give feedback and how do we still can't because we don't know where the what the status is of any. Of and these are all things outside of town. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So we're just trying to understand it. Yeah, interesting. Huh. And we can like move forward. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of mixed messages from the Forest Service. A lot of weird mis mixed messages. Oh, cool. When is that? Second. Yeah. I can't even be at the BOT meeting. <laughs> well, it turns out I have a job. <laughs> what do you know? I'll be there at that. Great. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah. Go pick their brains. Yeah, I'll plan on. Okay. Yeah, because we were all also having issues with them calling up people who were volunteering for niche and telling them not to go out into campsites, which is confusing Don't. because niche had a whole agreement with the Forest Service about that. But they then, were telling yeah. people not to go. Yeah, they were like, "Well, why are you even out there?" They're like, "Well, there was a illegal bonfire being lit in the in a split." tree like that was needs to like do... someone needs to note note these things your guys aren't there and they're like you shouldn't even be there get out of our Sounds forest like my relationship with c dot yeah. <laughs> they, they won't do it but then they get pissy with us for doing it yeah, well but you know communication goes a long way in relationships and apparently yeah. this forest service is also putting blue blue dots on trails that aren't 
It's vetted. <laughs> what do you know? All right. Or just random bikers painting blue dots. Maybe just like a little over communicating. We can move through it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I am married. Yeah, exactly. I move to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Unless seconds. there's anyone that's got anything else. 9.33, meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, thank you, new member. Good night, Brian. Thanks, Thanks for joining. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Good night. Oh, thanks, Brian. See y'all. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Brian. I did mean to mention that the farmer's market is the...